and we are live. Hello, everybody. Once again, it is time to play a little D&D. Fifth edition D&D, a homebrew campaign for which I have created an entire world filled up with way too many details that I can't remember. But that's okay. Eventually, we'll discover every single detail as I run my players through every single little bit of I've ever invented. This game will never end. Uh, but for now, welcome. This is Legend of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th ed campaign. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, GM, uh, host, uh, mad creator, and many other crazy things. Around me I have my collective players, who are about once again to play another session. Episode 43 of the broadcasted one. Mm -hmm. I, it occurred to me last time, you know, we said 42, uh, but we've actually been playing this game for uh, over three years. Yep. Uh, and a huge amount of lore and backstory and strange things have occurred in those three years, uh, which some of which is coming out now. So I don't know if the, 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 the you know, I, 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 I do sometimes wonder if not only you at home aren't following along, that we also aren't following along because we do have a lot of things involved here, but hopefully you are. If you do have questions, we're always open for questions. You can comment on the videos as they come up on YouTube. You can join us uh, live on Twitch, uh, streaming on Sundays, generally on four o'clock Atlantic time, uh, which you are, if you're watching it now live, you know that, but if you're watching this on YouTube, you might not realize these are live streamed. Uh, and uh, yeah, at some point we'll populate a website. I have the website up now. hasn't really been populated, but um, I'm it, always, exists. it exists. Someday I think I may take all of my notes and put them in order. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, it's about 700 pages, I think, of notes right wow. now. So I feel like such an amateur. With I like found a 100. third notebook. <laughs> I'm only at 99. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to keep track of a lot more things that you guys have never seen uh, as I try to fill out the world just slightly ahead of where you guys are. But I want my players to let you know who they are. We'll start over here. I'm Ray. I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid, who just figured out what her wedding ring does. <laughs> Pardon me as I check the sound. Oh, certainly. Hi there. Uh, my name's Jody. I play Clark, the half orc fighting rogue. And uh, we're on an island uh, in the Orc Territory, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm Pat, playing uh, Amarin Elisar, uh, Wood Elf Cleric, and uh, yeah, I guess we're going to see, so. Hey, I'm Nax, and I play Zakis, Half Elf Wizard, and we're about to go deep diving to find a cannon. Magical cannon. Organic cannon. It's all cannon. It's all true story. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I'll be wearing the headphones for a couple of minutes because I want to check the sound. We had some issues in the last one for sound, uh, but hopefully you can bear with us. So I hope pounding on the table didn't block your earphones. No, I, there's, there's, <laughs> there's, you, you can't see them. I don't think you can see them on camera, but I've added uh, I've highly technical... <laughs> Uh, shock absorbing, uh, shock absorbing, sound dampening, bass dampening, uh, oven mitts that I folded underneath to the microphone. So hopefully that'll actually make things sound a bit better. I also noticed I was way down in the mix, so hopefully it's a little bit better this time. Uh, I do hear a hum from somewhere, and that's probably not just in my head, but we'll see. I I hear. I hear too. too. I also hear Pat's chair. <laughs> so. There there are uh, yeah. Well, until we can afford that professional studio or remake this room again, uh, which I may do in this new year. So where's the donation link again? Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 contact me and throw money at me and I will be happy to do something with it. Uh, but let us recap a little bit what happened in the previous session. Uh, as noted, you have arrived in the Orkdana, the collection of islands claimed by the Orc, the home uh, that they have uh, had for time immemorial. Uh, although some of the history of the orcs, as you've learned a little bit from your time in the shadows, suggests that perhaps they did not originate here. Perhaps they came from somewhere else in their creation myth, which they do not seem to be aware of, but you have gleaned some details that they may be the child of some sort of collaboration slash union of Peturo and Paluxia as their, their, their fates or their birth seem to be connected to them both. How exactly? Unclear. In the Orc Dana, you found yourselves near the village of Tigatek, one of the island's uh, villages on the edge of the water, a fishing village, its primary purpose seeming to be to collect enough fish 
before heading back into the central villages. Uh, it's something that Clark discovered last time. These villages do seem to be relatively temporary set up and maintained only as long as they need to be and then potentially left to the ruins uh, of, uh, of winter. During the last session, one of the biggest things that happened was the curing of several kids. Amrun had uh, been in contact with Pollux, uh, a name strangely uh, reminiscent of the goddess Polluxia, which he has been following uh, since discovering her, really, uh, her formerly dead self. Uh, but Pollux the healer was healing a single child but there were nearly a dozen who were ill from some strange disease which seemed to strike them, wearing them out at first and then eventually causing them to no longer be able to move and shiver and, well, you don't know what the eventual result of such a disease would be, but you do know it was dangerous. Pollux gathered the village around a circle that she empowered with some energy and uh, created, I think we have a cat also providing uh, background noise, uh, the <laughs> have you been chosen? I've been, cho I've been chosen. Uh, the unofficial game cat, um, uh, marauder of doom, expeller of never mind. Uh, Pollux imbued a circle with some energy, some sort of protection, hoping to keep this illness perhaps from spreading from the accumulated uh, or the collected uh, children who were there. This disease known only to somehow attach itself only to children. As Amrun uh, began to uh, to cleanse these children of this disease, he discovered something somewhat disturbing. The fact that the disease itself did not seem to be something passive, not something of a low-level, merely pathogenic uh, existence, but in fact somehow either intelligent or the very least willful, and it resisted his attempts to cleanse the children. He overcame them with the assistance of Pollux to a certain degree, uh, also Elzera uh, leaping in and helping with her own healing magic. In the end, all of the children were uh, cleared from the disease, and I'm just noticing the sirens. Amazing mm -hmm. what you hear when you put these headphones on. Uh, but uh, they were all cured, except for perhaps the exception of a single child, someone who had been seen on the outside of the circle, who had coughed at one point, but could not be found later. No one knows exactly who that child was or what this significance is. Um, some samples were collected from the ill children. The samples were examined first by Zakis, but only cur uh, curtly, and then later with her alchemy kit, Elzera took a deeper examination of what these things are. Unfortunately, the, so the, the substance proved to be very volatile, which was partially a reminder of another volatile poisonous substance they had encountered a long time ago, I believe on the island of Ikro, if I remember correctly, um, where a very volatile pool of multicolored substance had been found and ac accidentally ignited, letting a, a large blast go. Uh, that seemed to be the work of a hag who was found nearby. And in fact, a hag whose alchemy kit Elzera carries to this day. It also reminded you of another source, a strange pool found in a hidden uh, locked room of the library, the great library of Ator, once the offices of uh, Tarsal Praxis. Uh, it seemed to have some strange ability to take dead things and bring them to some form of living. After the, the uh, healing was done, the village erupted into a spontaneous party in which much celebration was had for most of the rest of the day. The group was introduced to a substance, let me see if I can find the name of it here, uh, a, a peculiar... Uh, to or am I yeah, the, the, exactly, the, uh, the drink of the area. Uh, the name again, sorry, was Anatu Orum, yeah. yeah. Um, known kind of as a uh, spirit drink, a very thick honey-like substance that coated the teeth and remained there providing uh, sustenance, I guess you might say, for the entirety of a day, yeah. if left. Um, 
along with that, um, Amrun also sought to uh, heal a woman who had lost her foot. Uh, I believe she said it was in a fishing accident. It had been a long time ago. The foot was regrown, and you were actually gifted a, uh, a pot of this uh, Anatu Orum uh, for yourself. Uh, following that, I'm skipping over a little bit here, but following the party, um, Clark spoke with his sister uh, and making several requests of her, and she also uh, was delighted to talk with him after having missed him for so long. Um, learning a little bit more about the village, and that's where he also determined that the village itself was not a permanent one um, from his own uh, walking around. Uh, finally, later on that evening, the group gathered to first perform the ritual that Paturo had taught to them. Uh, the ritual which could help them locate his heart, which had been stolen uh, by the minions of Arvax and is believed to be here somewhere. They went away from the village so as not to disturb them with this strange demonic ritual they had been taught. After the ritual was over, however, and passing the... Uh, or doing the ritual over the map that they were granted of the Orkdana, they discovered not exactly what they were looking for. Instead of finding a definitive location for the heart itself, it appears that the heart is not located here, which I suppose is probably a bit of a relief to a certain degree that something so evil is not to be found in the Orkdana. However, eight locations near some of the villages in the islands were highlighted, and with a bit more of a, of a calling upon Paluxia for guidance, there was some indication that these are other locations where corruption similar to the disease you had fought before may be located. The fact that they were turned up by the spell, uh, the ritual provided by Peturo, does suggest, however, that this is somehow connected to his heart. After that evening, I believe everybody basically took the rest of the night off, <laughs> relaxing a little bit, uh, recovering, and uh, getting ready for what they planned to do the next day. So, night has passed, the sun has risen, it's a chilly morning, another indication that the seasons are changing. Faster perhaps here as far north as you are uh, than what you see uh, where you are normally from, in the sort of middle of the continent. I remember you, you telling me to figure out the date. Sure. Did you figure out the date? Um, I forget the months in your world. Okay. That makes it harder. It makes it harder. But we left around the 20th of Axum, and it was five weeks from then. Okay. Um, which means it's probably not as much fall as I had suggested. So there may be some elastic time in there. Hmm. Let me just uh, <laughs> quickly look up my calendar. Yes, I even made a calendar for my game because... That seemed like a great idea at the time. Uh, let's see. I called it Sane Calendar. Why did I call it Sane <laughs> Calendar? I don't know, but it's the like 4116. So, uh, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So, Axum is the eighth month. Uh, so, five weeks later would put you either in Shervin or in Olivin. And for a mnemonic, Shervin is the equivalent of September, Olivin the equivalent of October. Mm. So I had some, some sense of when I was doing that. Uh, so yes, it is getting to be fall. Hey, I got that part right. That's Woo. good. So, you've been staying at Gannett's place. Gannett, the mother of Quag, the uh, sailor who you met on your first day here. I think that the elves have been up for a little while attending to different light duties. Uh, Clark and uh, Zakis, though, having a nice full night's sleep. Yes. And the relative warmth of this place. Small cooking fire has been built up in the uh, stone, uh, effectively a stone urn that's in the center of the room. Uh, it itself is propped up on uh, some wood. And again, it's making something like breakfast. Sacrifice for the ritual. Would that damage have been healed over the, over yes. the night's rest? Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if there's anything weird going on. It's it's normal damage as far as you can tell. Okay. Alrighty. So it's only a few hit points here and there. Gotcha. 
look at the map and the spots. Mm -hmm. Like after a nice refreshing sleep of eight hours, which never happens in real life. Uh, yeah, I know. We know I... it's a fantasy universe because you get a full <laughs> night's sleep. Yes. Uh, do I recognize a pattern at all, like based on how the spots are on the map? You like, can study them for a while if you want. Yeah, we will do that. Okay. And so. like maybe like does it match a certain constellation or something? Like, okay. Uh, the pattern that I had found was that they are connected to water. All of them have some sort of water. Mm. That was one suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that actually sources. that was clarified by Polexia because I had yeah. communed with her. Yeah. Uh, I mean, keeping in mind that most settlements are near water. Yeah. And these mm -hmm. are near settlements, so there's probably uh, at least some likelihood of water near being nearby. Mm -hmm. But I think or like a spring or something. had clarified that it was uh, it was diseased mm. uh, areas. Um, just clarification: today we're going to get the cannon. Yes, I mean, that's the idea. Cool. I will prepare my spells accordingly. That, that is what your GM believes. So <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, I got a lot of things to make up. Okay. Well, I will make sure I have water breathing. Nobody had any disease, poison, or exhaustion levels, did they? No. Cool. Well, actually, you returned from the shadow, and most of that was gone already. Uh, the worst was uh, Clark among you. who would take on a couple of the, uh, the scars. Mm. But even those were relieved. Mm. So... Gannett sits kind of humming a bit to herself. There's some, it's a tune, you're not quite familiar with it. Uh, it sounds like one of those tunes that you you learn for your entire life to the point where the actual words aren't as important anymore. Uh, and you kind of hum, she hums it under her breath. Uh, Quag has not come in, but you get the impression that Quag actually lives somewhere else. Is there uh, minor chores to be done, like wood chop, that sort of thing? If you ask Gannett, yeah. um, she will confirm yes, that okay. she needs some more wood. Um, Quag has uh, has usually done sun, sun to a scene to it, but he's been at sea for a while. Right. So, um, Quag would, would like to volunteer. Okay. Uh, she she hands you an axe. Uh, you get the impression that while uh, Gannett is considerably older, uh, and you know has a bit of a curve in her spine and moves a little slowly. She picks up the axe with no effort whatsoever, uh, and while she appears to be somewhat frail, uh, you definitely get the sense that she probably could have cut down the trees herself and dragged them whole in. Um, even with the curve on her spine and the kind of hunched way she is sitting over the pot, she probably still stands taller than you if she's standing full. Mm. Uh, but she, with a smile, appreciates the, the offer and hands you uh, an axe. It needs a bit of, uh, of sharpening as well. And she does suggest that Exactly that. It needs a bit of sharpening, kind of adding on to that uh, that uh, uh, notion. Uh, she does also say if you know how to gather uh, any uh, herbs or any uh, fresh uh, growth from the forest, that would make this the breakfast better. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I, I'd offer to help with that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. In that <laughs> case. All right. The two of you head off to do that. Um, I will make it a survival roll. Either sure. one you can roll, it'll be with advantage because you're both working I'll on it. I'll leave it to you. You're the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back inside the hut, uh, you've woken up and you, you studied your spells for the morning, gathered your energy, uh, and start to take a look at the map and the little red dots where blood was dripped onto <coughs> it that all became the significant reaction of that particular ritual. Uh, no, blackened, because I inked them. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so it's soaked in. It's probably a little crusty uh, bit where the, the blood actually was. Gross. Uh, true. Um, and I'll say you're going to take basically the same amount of time that they're going to do for that. Is there anything that, that Amra is doing this morning in particular? Hmm. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, remember the cookbook? Yes. That uh, you learned from? Aaron had borrowed it from you, but did he give it back to you before you left? Because he never got around to reading it. I don't think so, because okay. he hadn't gone around to reading it. I think it's in my pack. Okay. Then, One of us have a book. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, then he'd be reading that. Okay. I mean, he doesn't have any uh, uh, room to practice with it, but he'll start reading it anyway. Okay. That was the one that had the cantrips in it, I believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool so. Oh, yeah. Book. 
I have them somewhere in this mm-hmm. class. Um, also, I just think a, a little bit on my ring, and I have advantage anyway. So. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because you're specifically going to the edge of the forest. Yep. Uh, this forest, at this point, is mostly sort of palm and, and uh, tropical trees. There are deciduous trees you can see off in the distance as well, but it's fairly thin at this particular spot. But, uh, but yeah, so while you're doing that, you can also be cutting down wood for, yeah. for fire. Clark has a whetstone, so he'll sharpen the axe as okay. per usual. Do the cutting, okay. and then resharpen before he hands it back. Okay. That's a 1 and a 19, so uh, 28. Wow. <laughs> um, as you sort of start looking through the forest, um, a lot of the the uh, flora here is unfam- unfamiliar. Um, they have much thicker reeds on the flowers. The flowers themselves are larger, but at this particular point starting to wilt a little bit. And so it's making it difficult until you kind of hear and almost smell in the breeze uh, almost a, a direction that comes to you as the, the, the breeze, which doesn't seem to move the flowers at all, carries the scent as you start picking up and you find a couple of, of uh, natural, essentially natural turnips. Uh, that are grown, and you kind of get the impression that it's a wild garden. In other words, it's not it's not cordoned off from everything else, like you would find a garden in many places in Vatour, but instead, sort of the seeds are allowed to be planted amongst everything else. That if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't necessarily see it. Um, it's an interesting technique of kind of mixed gardening. Um, you find some good stout trees uh, and start to to assemble a good amount of lumber. Sure. The the um, palm trees you find are a little more hollow than you expected, uh, and probably not as good for burning. So you have to go a little further in to find those. Right. Uh, find a couple of fir trees. You can see where they've been cutting before, uh, selectively cutting here and there. I'll try to match what was drawn to what I'm bringing home. Okay. So. I'm Bring on the same sort of wood that they would have brought home. Okay. Between the two of you, you have a, a, a decent morning of it just sort of out there. It is a little chilly, but once the sun rises, it gets actually a lot warmer than you expected it to. Right. Uh, the humidity level is quite high. Meanwhile, inside, you stare at this and start to try to figure out if there's some sort of pattern. Uh, let's make this uh, an intelligence check, please. Right. I guess I need my morning coffee. So I got a two, which means eight total. Okay. Um, looking at it, I mean, the map shows you nothing much of what the actual topography is like. You're pretty sure there's some indication of some mountains. There was talk about streams. So whether these points are even at the same height or whether they're different sizes, you start thinking towards constellations, but you haven't really studied them all that much. You kind of, in some ways, uh, wish um, your friend from Thunk was here mm-hmm. uh, because they knew the constellations inherently. Uh, you kind of think back to their their bewilderment, fear, and reveration, revelation, revelation, reverence. That's what I'm looking for uh, towards those stars. Uh, and while lost in that particular thought, nothing particularly comes to you as to the shape of how this how this works. Well, I'd probably know where to find the books in the library, though. It's got to count for There's a right? couple of, of sections <laughs> there that cover astronomical yeah. phenomena, astronomical uh, coincidences. There's ones on prophecy. You know, with a couple of days, you could probably find whatever books are there if they know anything about this particular feature. This is not a library. This is not a library. There's only one book to be found, and I think it's, he's carrying it at the moment, uh, looking at this ginormous cookbook. You return back to the cabin. The The f- fire has already been burning for a while. She's had some fuel inside, and you can smell this this uh, this porridge, essentially, that she's making. Um, she takes the, the uh, turnips from you, doesn't look like that's going to be for breakfast. That's more of a later thing. But you had you, you collected some reeds and other things, some some grasses, yeah. uh, some uh, wild sage, and some wild thyme. Also, uh, anything that I don't recognize, like specifically, I'll pick an extra one and ask if I could keep keep it to study it. Okay. Um, Gannett kind of raises her eyebrows at the idea that you need to ask permission to keep it, and says it's not mine to give or keep, but you can keep it as you wish. <laughs> Um, that one's not terribly tasty, but it, it works. 
This one is most like salt, but without all of the uh, rough coarseness of salt and so forth. She starts to explain the different ones. One she does take out um, is essentially like a lemongrass. It's a very thick, heavy reed. Uh, she cracks it onto the edge of this stone cauldron and then uh, breaks up some of it to throw into the porridge, um, which she then is ready to serve the rest of you. It's a very thick porridge. It has that weird extra citrus note from the lemongrass, which is kind of an unexpected turn in all of it. Uh, it's fairly basic. Um, you get the impression that whatever is in it, whatever grain she uses, probably didn't come from here. Uh, so, which means they probably have some food shipped out here. Uh, it's one of the few meals and few things you've seen her make and, and even tasted here that doesn't have fish in it for, for a surprising amount. Um, Although she does offer that she has some dried fish if you'd like to have that with it. Clark will. Okay. The dried fish is fairly salty. Uh, nothing fairly fancy. It's a white fish uh, that's been smoked the day before. Mm. Uh, and still kind of kind of wrapped up in its own skin, really. Um, not long after the food gets served, uh, Quag pushes through the opening of the door. Uh, sees that food is there, um, walks over quite uh, quite smilingly and happily and sits down and starts to eat. Not even really asking permission or anything else, but doesn't seem to be terribly surprising to get it. Um, he comes for food. He kind mm -hmm. of comes for food. Uh, if anything, it seems like she was prepared as she kind of uh, reaches and pulls out a, a more fish and a few other things. There's a small uh, uh, paste of berries that she has as well, which is spread onto the fish. Uh, and she offers you some as well for your sure. fish. Uh, it provides a lot more flavor than the fish itself okay. and counteracts some of the saltiness. Mm. Um, uh, as Quag uh, kind of tucks into his meal, he starts to speak with, you know, not exactly the best table etiquette, but a uh, half full mouth. So, you wanted to go to water today, yes? That yes. was the, the idea. Mm. There is a vessel heading out that can take you. Same direction. Good fishing ground there. Would that be enough? Sure. If we go to the exact same spot where we were ambushed, yes, I'd like to retrieve the cannon. We have ways for going deep underwater. Ah, good, good. We have very few pearls to share, so if you have your own ways, that's good. Do we have some pearls? <laughs> I, I, know, water I got rid of mine ages ago. <laughs> oh, I saw mine. That's why I have water breathing. Anyways. I'm assuming I have. Oh, I do too. I also have like an ultra self. So. Um, good, good. He's just kind of taking it in, not really paying much attention, eating well. Um, they will be fishing all day, so if you need to come back, just look for them. We know the area. Not exactly. Water has no landmarks like land does, but there are ways for us to determine where we are. I drew maps and reference diagrams. I know exactly how to get there. Mm -hmm. He seems skeptical about the idea of drawing maps for water, but uh, he, doesn't, on the land he <laughs> doesn't really say anything in particular. But, um, do you have any questions for Quag or Gannett before we move on? Is there any kind of creatures we should watch out for as we go deep into the water? Hmm. Uh, many sharks. There's a whale or two there somewhere. Okay. We haven't caught one for a while. So I think they may be hiding. Other things too, as you go deeper. Hmm, you might see some giant clams. Wonderful. More pearls. Well, if we see any giant clams, we can pick up some pearls, I suppose. Everyone's imagining like a pearl the size of a soccer ball. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't kick them. You wear the Triton. They are bottom feeders, and it kind of spits. Probably was a. a, a a, uh, a, a bit of, uh, of a bone from the dried fish, at least that seems to be the appropriate timing for it. But you get the impression there's a little bit of contempt as well. Tritons. Yeah, we met some at uh, yes. Aquain. Mm. Nice. You've seen Tritons yeah. in Aquain numerous times. Mm -hmm. uh, they're scavengers. Right. They sell at the market all the time, the different things they pull up from wrecks beneath the water. Because um, they can live there. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't know exactly where you've never been to any kind of Triton the location, but somewhere underwater is yeah. where they do live. Right. Uh, and it's not surprising in some ways that they would run into them being on the water so much here. Um, Can the Tritons communicate? If we encounter some, should oh, we yeah. 
fear of being attacked. I talked to one in the queen. Good. Just don't mess with them, and they don't mess with you. But count your count your shiny things before you leave them. Understood. They aren't to be trusted much. Thank you for the hospitality. Uh, do you say that to Quag or Gannett? Both. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Quag just sort of grunts and Gannett uh, smiles. You have saved my son and others, and you have saved many children. Uh, sorry, she's older than that. Uh, I would, I would expect no less than to give you what I can. Um, I look at Quag. Mm-hmm. He seems rabidly. I think there is angry. someone who now wishes to get back into fishing. Could you find a spot for her? Yeah, a fisherman that wants to return to fishing, yeah. We can always use another hand. Good. She'll probably be looking around sometime soon. <laughs> I just mentioned where the house was. I don't know any. I, I, I think he was there. Oh, you're talking about the old woman who's yeah. what you said. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. he was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, he's, yeah. he's the one who told you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that case, yeah, I'd, I'd be more specific about it. To yeah. Ask if he could find her a spot somewhere. I would be honored. She was a good fisher. So the stories have all told. Before my time. Mm. It's important that people get to live how they want to. Mm. You're wise. Mm. You may wish to uh, wait a while and <laughs> before deciding that. He kind of laughs and slaps you heartily on the shoulder, which kind of pitches you forward a little bit. Shield. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, but if there's no other discussion you want to have, we can move on from there. Mm. Mm-hmm. The meal is filling, and you can kind of feel it uh, solid in your stomach. It's one of those those kind of porridges that when you eat it, uh, it sort of solidifies a little bit. Not in a terrible way, unless you ate too much. Uh, but much like the, the alcohol the night before, there's this impression that it's meant to keep you for a long time. And a little bit of extra protein from the fish also helps a little bit, and a little bit of extra sugar from the, the paste that they put on it, probably made from berries. Uh, mm-hmm. all contribute to this notion of you're going to go out for it that day. Right. Uh, and you may eat a little bit along the way, but probably not that much. Um, Quag tells you to meet him down by the docks, and he will be there with a boat. Uh, the boat that they came in on last night is not there. Uh, it more or less was abandoned where it was, uh, having its basically its keel broken mm. uh, and held together by... Uh, uh, magic and good luck and a lot of hope, perhaps, as it finally made it in. Thoughts and prayers. But you had seen them take off uh, the the uh, large nets that they had collected full of fish inside. Uh, not, not one to waste anything, it seems. Uh, and almost as though each harvest they make from the water is extraordinarily important uh, and, and cannot be wasted on idle things. He welcomes you there. This boat is about the same size as the one before, but looks a bit older. Uh, it's a very simple style of boat. There is a mast. Uh, there's also a tiller on the back, uh, but there are uh, oars as well, and the mast is down. Uh, half a dozen uh, orcs of different uh, ages, most of them older, but there's a couple of young ones. There's one who's there who seems to be uh, a, a female orc. She's very, very young. Uh, you get the impression that she's probably just in her teens, uh, but already showing uh, strong muscles, uh, as though she's been uh, part of this process for a while. Uh, but they go on board, bringing on numerous nets, uh, some of which they'll probably throw overboard, and some of which will probably stay in the hold to hold with the catch. Uh, and they welcome you on board. It's a little bit tight with the four of you additionally on top on the surface, but uh, with all of the uh, other, uh, well, five of the, uh, four of the others taking up oars, uh, Quag himself kind of at the front, 
uh, directing where the boat, or sorry, at the back with the tiller directing where it will go, and another one uh, taking up the position beside him in that drummer spot you saw before. And in fact, you recognize this as the drummer who was on that other ship as well, uh, despite the fact that uh, their ship was was uh, was preyed upon the day before. They're already going back to sea, as if they can't wait to do it. Uh, Quag barks a few orders in Orcish. Uh, simple words, uh, ready, go, prepare, push off, different things like that to get the boat underway. Everyone is in full armor. Okay. You notice the rest of the, the orcs especially are wearing, wearing very, very little. Uh -huh. um, and you also notice that just about everything they're wearing is salt stained. Uh, probably not all that uh, hygienic really, uh, except for Quag in a way, because Quag was literally washed yesterday by having fallen in the water. Um, the drummer begins the drum, and the oars hit the water. At this point, the drum is fairly sedate, just beating at a rhythm so that the the uh, the oars have a regular rhythm to pull themselves back away from the shore, and then turn the boat and head out towards the water. Now, there are almost no landmarks, but Quag seems pretty confident in the direction he's going. Uh, he had mentioned that these were familiar uh, waters where they fished before. Good fishing can be found there. Uh, and traveling along, it seems as though he's heading in the right direction. Now, the weird thing about your particular ability to understand exactly where you are is that it is somewhat dependent on being able to see landmarks. Without landmarks, it's really hard to determine anything. Uh, it's not an inbuilt GPS, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Yeah, but like based on where we arrived last time, and you can tell where knowledge. north is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always know where north is, and then you remember more or less the direction of the space. But it is going to be difficult, and there are no landmarks. But the general impression you get is he's heading at least in the right direction. Uh, about an hour into the journey, uh, or sorry, about twenty minutes into the journey, I will grab a grab some sand before we leave to put it in a little pouch. Okay. Okay quickly grab some sand from the beach. Um, you hear a cry from Quag as he points off towards the port side? Starboard is left, port is right, am I right on that? Other way. Other way? Starboard mm -hmm. side? Uh, as he shouts, and you can see just uh, cresting the waves, is indeed uh, a large uh, plume of white as the water is pushed up and the edge of a whale appears just on the surface. Uh, there's a general cry coming from the other orcs. It seems happy. Uh, and you, the few words uh, that you hear from them uh, in orcish uh, amount to effectively uh, the giver of life sends her luck. Mm -hmm. So they're taking this as a positive sign, a good sign. Clark will say, we're under good omens, apparently. Are they going to good. hunt the whale? or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've not seen anything larger than a knife. So yeah. if they are going to hunt the whale, they're much braver, or they have hidden talents you're not aware of. Or maybe that's why we're here. Uh, <laughs> I cannot study it. I forgot the... Oh, no. The because it's... It's too far. It's too far, yeah. Well, they aren't veering towards it. You get the impression that they're keeping a very strong distance away yeah. from it. Uh, in fact, as it sort of veers a little bit towards them, they move a different pathway away. Not exactly following the same line you were looking for, but giving this whale a pretty wide berth. Um, uh, the rhythm picks up a little bit more, and two of them continue to row while the other two unfurl a sail. You can feel a little bit of a wind now. Uh, and now they start to tack into the wind, now taking not a direct path, but in fact following the wind as it goes to try to use it to direct themselves towards where they need to go. Are any of you doing anything in the meantime? Just, Just nope. keep, keep an eye. Keep an eye. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After a few minutes, the whale itself disappears beneath the sea, satisfied. And Quag yells out, it, thanks mm. for its, mm. uh, its accompanying oh. them. If it's by the boat for a little while, mm -hmm. could I make a roll at disadvantage? Yeah, I think so. You can see it's uh, swimming close to the surface. It breaches a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, it is a it is a uh, a large whale with a rounded head. Mm -hmm. um, you're not sure exactly which kind. I'm not either. <laughs> uh, but sufficient to say it's a, it's a whale. But yeah, yeah, you can you can study and see how, how it moves so effortlessly, yeah. keeping up with the boat. Yeah. Uh, and seeming to not only keep up with but be able to move back and forth. 
uh, as if it's hunting itself. Is it long enough that I would have been able to? Or yes. With yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a 21. 21? Yeah. You're familiar with the shape now, and you believe that at the right time, you could become like it. Cool. <laughs> Um, it is a massive shape, and you're not sure what being something that large would be like. I'm trying to think of the largest thing you've been. Mm, probably the elementals. No, the T Rex. T Rex. Or the, the or, no, was no, it T Rex? No, that was the I summoned. No, I, I turned into a mammoth. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yes. I believe that was in the council chambers, wasn't yes. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks like a lot of the ideas for whales are around CR six or seven, so yeah. that yeah. wouldn't be a limit either. How yeah. big are they? How big gargantuan. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. You you wouldn't necessarily become a gargantuan whale. Okay. You'd probably become I think large is the limit Jeez. for you, is it not? No, there's no limit. There's no limit. No, there's no it's size the limit. CR limit. Yeah. Yeah. Not size. And you can't actually change the size of something, you have to become like the actual one. Well, there you are can, multiple you whales out there. Uh, yeah. You become a whale, but not necessarily, you know, gargantuan whale. Yeah. In any case, you've now... I think this is, is this the first sea creature? I have some fish. Some mm -hmm. fish, okay. Well, this but is a bit of a scale difference for yeah. fish. Do I notice um, Elzara looking at the whale intently? Oh, easily. Oh. I'm like hanging off the edge of the yeah. boat. There's no doubt that she's st studying this okay. whale with practically every bit of her being, I think, at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's easy to notice that. Okay. So did you get a good look at it? Yeah. Excellent. It is cool. Um, the only whale in the thing is the killer whale. Yeah, which is about 30 feet long. I'll have to look up specific thing. whale stats for later, but right. if it yeah, comes up, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, I don't think there's any official stats for it, because... Yeah, there's just the killer whale. It's, it's a whale, you know. There's, there's only so many times you need to have official stats for a whale. Uh, generally, not too many. You've turned into animals before. Can you turn into a whale? You doubt me. <laughs> Excellent. You wound me. <laughs> I would imagine if we run into sharks, they might be less inclined to hang out. Mm -hmm. So that might be useful. Or tritons could possibly be eaten by a whale. They might hunt them, for all we know. A small number of tritons could possibly be eaten by a whale. <laughs> I, I meant the tritons eating whales. Mm-hmm. Well, but right now, the tritons... I mean, I don't know. Uh, right now, the tritons aren't, aren't an issue. Yes. So, with the weaving back and forth that they're doing, and the, the drum providing some rhythm, but not like the other night, providing any particular propulsion, not providing any particular protection for the ship itself, uh, it is mostly up to the wind. And after a while, even the oars are mostly withdrawn, um, used uh, a little bit like additional tillers at times, but for the most part, uh, are withdrawn in, and the wind itself is now carrying the ship. Uh, looks like it's going to be an overcast day. Um, it gets a bit gray. Um, the sun was out very briefly, first thing when you first launched, but now seems to be heading towards uh, a gray. After about an hour, um, the uh, the sail is uh, reduced, uh, and Quag announces that they have arrived at the fishing grounds. Um, now again, without any real references, it's difficult for you to really determine exactly where you are. But you do get a general sense of the same area. There is something familiar about the way the waves are moving, something familiar about uh, every so often you can just make out what is a stone, which is probably the peak of some underwater thing. It seems to disappear and reappear from time to time. Okay. It's the one thing which kind of clues you into the idea that you're probably in the right area. A stone. Like, can we see? Can we see the bottom from here or no? No. Okay. No. It's much, much deeper. Good. Okay. Uh, the water is fairly clear towards the surface, but very, very dark. Very, very shortly in. All right. And uh, Quag comes to you. This is close to where we were. Okay. I'm not sure how much closer I can get. All right. Thank you. I'll get to use my ring of swimming again. That's been ages since I could use it. What yeah. um, What else can I do for you? We are going to set our nets soon. Let us know if any attackers show up. 
how can I let you know? Yeah. Where will you be? Water. Right. No, I think just as long as you're not too far from this area so we can find you again, that should be fine. We will stay for the day, but we will need to head before the night mm. comes. Understood. Shouldn't be that long. If we're not back by then, head back without us. I hope that you return. As do we. <laughs> He barks orders to the others, and all of the others now are engaged in taking out these massive nets. They've got small floats made out of the hollower uh, wood that you mm. saw before, uh, and they start throwing them overboard, kind of letting them drag behind them. So, sorry. Can I ask a silly question? Mm -hmm. Having uh, dealt with uh, f having dealt with time spent around Fletcher's and Boyer's. Uh, is the hollow wood something you could use for arrows, or is it too flimsy? Um, I mean, obviously, you'd have to have the thinner of the of the yeah. branches as well. Uh, probably. Okay. Um, it's it's hollow, and that might make it actually too light mm -hmm. for an arrow. Yeah. But it could be filled with something, uh, and some of the thinner ones aren't as hollow as well. Okay. So yeah, it probably could. Enough. So. The boat is more or less drifting at this point. It's not anchored at all. In fact, mm -hmm. they tell you the water's too deep to anchor here. Um, but they are letting out the nets go out behind them, and you all feel the, sh the, the ship kind of slow down a bit with the drag of these nets basically behind them. If there is anyone who is watching, or if any of you know more about fishing than I do, this is probably completely inaccurate. But it's a fantasy world, so that's what they're doing. <laughs> this, is, this is how orcs fish. Tell me that you know how orcs fish. Anyway. <laughs> um, Amran, you said you had breathe water prepared, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, I can give us uh, water, or water breathing easy enough, I believe. So it is a ritual, so you, you'd be able to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Quag, can you get us closer to and where the cannon sank? So yeah. easy. I don't know where it sank. If I could figure out where it sank exactly. We can move the boat a bit, okay. but once the no, once the nets are in the water, it's hard yeah. to move. Yeah. We could just water walk there. Yeah, but I figured I can. I can cast a little orb. It can act as an eye. It's invisible, so it can't be detected. And I can I can see in the dark well enough in the air. I should be able theoretically to see in the dark underwater. I can move this thing around mm -hmm. until we find it, and then move as close as we can to that location. There are places that we can't see through the darkness that are too dark for us. All at the bottom of the sea, in this there's, location. There's no dark. light down. At a certain, it'll work down to a certain point, but probably eventually it might not. I don't know. Um, I will ritually cast water breathing first. Uh, I will let Quag know that uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, how many crew members are there, including Quag? Uh, six, and then Quag. Okay. Um, I can give everybody but one of his crew water breathing for a day, just in case they fall over. Well, we do have our pearls. Sure, but this is an effect of the spell anyways, so I might as well. It doesn't cause the damage um, that the pearls do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could do the rest of your crew if you have a pearl for yourself. Do them first. I'm a good swimmer. Cool. So I will. Uh, and he actually barks off some something in Orcish, which, again, Clark can translate, basically warning them that this is a spell for their own good, yeah. not to be alarmed. Yeah. Uh, I also don't... If any of them want, I can give them water walking, but only lasts an hour. Uh, well, we do not need to walk on the water. Okay. Um, then uh, I will just give the four of us a uh, water walk. I will also cast that ritually. Okay. Um, that will only last an hour. I don't think either one of those are concentration, are they? Nope. No. Um, I will ask to be left out of the water walk, because I'll just alter self so I can swim. Sure. I mean, I was going to end it once we get there anyways. Oh, fair enough. Um, okay. Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get down there. Yeah. But. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, then that's fine. All right. So about 20 minutes pass as you prepare these spells. The uh, the 
fissures are distracted a bit by the spectacle of the spells and the swirling of this bluish white energy some of it actually coming out of the water itself uh, especially for the water walk and the water well, actually both the water breathing and water walking to kind of spin and swirl around you as the the oceans themselves kind of respond to the spell uh, and also I make the ocean rumble while I'm casting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's considerable uh, shaking on the on the water uh-huh. which they look somewhat nervous at partially because it's probably scaring away the fish um, eh, it'll be fine um, but uh, uh, quag kind of uh, he shouts at them and, and shoves them to get them back into full working mode as there's still a lot of nets. And you see, you see they, they put out at least a dozen nets, and these are massive nets, uh, kind of in a line that they string together uh, behind the boat itself. But the two spells pass. Each of you feel invigorated with this magical energy. Yeah, not going to keep it. <laughs> and, uh, and then what do you do? Um, based on what Zacchaeus has read about, like, physics and water and <laughs> how li- how deep light goes into the water. I don't think physics is a thing in this world. Unfortunately. Light a, magic. There, I mean, yeah, there, there, there well, is a physics. Well, yeah. there, there is physics. Yeah. I don't think they study it so much. Yeah. Uh, some do. Mundane, yeah. mundane uh, uh, mathematics mm-hmm. and, and physics are studied. They just have mm-hmm. a limit because yeah. magic overcomes most of it. But how deep do I think I could plunge an arcane eye and still be able to see? About 50 feet. And I heard the ship drop 100 feet when you parted the water. Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm not going to cast that. Uh, would you like an escort? If I can get an elemental or several. An escort for me or an escort for, for us? Oh, okay. I was wondering if I was going somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, you I off booked you flights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, mean, I can have a large number of them or one powerful one. Sure, I mean, if you want to. Um, as long as you don't lose focus on them again. I can't lose focus focus on them anymore. I've practiced this magic so often now that even if you were to slap me across the face while I had an elemental next to me, I wouldn't lose control of it. Uh, well, no, I think from the damage you don't, but if there, uh, there's some of those when we were in the uh, hive with the wasps, there was something that happened to you that caused your focus to end and the, the elemental attack does. That, that, that never happened. Zacchaeus would never admit to that. <laughs> uh, but if Zacchaeus says he's completely in control, now yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, so, multiple or one large one? Do you guys have any opinions? Whatever large. you want. I'll cast whatever's fast. Or actually, I'll cast the... Hmm. Are you going to hate me if I cast, like, eight of them? You're going to keep track of them. I have, like, little blue counters for them. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't stats, though, like... And their stats, and their hit points, and all that stuff is on you. What about the stats? Like, can you... Are there any on, on, on D&D Beyond, or...? Uh, the stats? Uh, yes. I have... Well... CR 1 over 8. Yeah, I mean, I have created... Uh, what? 20 different... No. 30 different elementals, but I don't have those on hand mm. um, because you decided not to do elementals anymore, so I put that on the back burner <laughs> about a year ago. Eight uh, elementals of, ch- of challenge rating one. So those are methods at that level. Okay. I think that's the only thing that's a low level elemental. There's a couple of water snakes, and that's about it. So maybe give me snakes one time. I forget about snakes. I mean, there's not a lot of. Th- it's it's one of those one of those loopholes, <laughs> not loopholes, one of those mistakes that they've kind of made. The DM has all the stats. Is, yeah, <laughs> the DM has all the stats. There aren't any stats, because literally the elementals. Let me bring up like full elemental list. Uh, there are well, there's about twenty of them. Let's see how many are lower than CR uh, mm-hmm. two. No, uh, actually, there's quite a few. Surprisingly. All right, what what CR uh, are you looking for? I can one quarter. One quarter. Actually, I don't know how to screen cap on this, sorry. Yeah, you're looking at methods at this point. So what so the methods are mud, smoke, steam, and dust and ice. Mm. I guess there's a magma oh. method. Oh no, those are one half, never mind. You might want to wait because it only lasts an hour. Okay. So you might we might want to wait till we're about to head down. Or I can cast a big one for uh, management reasons. <laughs> and I'll find stacks for my own elementals later on. Okay. Uh, if you need the, you'd be casting the water elemental. Yep. 
I'm assuming we can, we can get there within an hour, hopefully. Well, that's that the, one I have. That's the CR5 one. Oh, right? yeah. That, that, that would be Conjure Elementals, which I can also do, because I yeah. slotted it. Um. Do I know if I can cast this underwater, if I have water breathing on? You do yep. not know. Okay. You can breathe so you can talk. Okay. It's never actually done it before. Yeah. And it takes a few minutes to cast, and if we get ambushed, then I won't have time. Water is the one elemental I don't actually have a printout for. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I can give you the book. You just use the stats over there. Oh, 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 oh. It's in the monster manual. I actually brought my monster manual. <laughs> oh, it's not right there anyway. What? Oh. <laughs> I think I was reading it. <clears throat> Anyway, Page wait a second. There's monsters in this game. It's no. terrifying. No, you are the monsters. Okay, good. Uh, so you head out over the water to cast it. Or? What are you guys doing? Mm. I guess the first. <laughs> How long does the spell last? An hour. It lasts one hour, yeah. and it does not say the elemental goes away at the end of an hour. It's you lose control of it at the end of an hour. Yes, but d- isn't he a conjurer, so he doesn't? He doesn't lo- He doesn't break concentration yeah. as a result of damage. As a result of damage. He can't lose it that way. But once the one hour ends, uh, it's gone, and it has 30 extra hit points. <laughs> um, but that's up to you. I'd double-check the specifics of his feature. The elemental is friendly to you and your companions for the duration. Mm-hmm. Then it flips you the bird. An uncontrolled elemental can't be dismissed by you, and it disappears one hour after you summoned it. So it does disappear. Okay, so there we go. Yeah. I was pretty sure it did. So, circling back around, what are you guys doing? Standing on the edge of the boat right now as they deploy more and more of these nets. I will cast us an escort. I mean, I'm assuming we'll get there within the hour. Right? It, it would be more useful underwater. Okay. Is what we're saying. I'll, I'll wait then. Is wait, waiting until we're actually, because we're going to walk to there and then. Yeah, go we have down. to find the place first. I mean, we might not find it right off the bat. Yeah. So. But I have I have the stats now, so this discussion was productive. Sort of <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll wait, but I I'm keeping that sand with me because it's a component. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I forget where I was doing. Okay. Yes. Um, so you set forth over the water, climbing down off the side of the boat, and to the surprise of the sailors stepping onto the water rather than uh, stepping into it or diving into it. Uh, Quag doesn't seem to be as surprised as most of the rest. The most surprised is that young uh, female orc who is sort of standing agog at the edge of the boat watching you as you stroll easily off into the water. It's a little bit strange because the water is a little choppy here. So while you are walking on its surface, it is like walking on a ginormous turbulent waterbed where it is moving up and down all the time. Mm. Uh, and it does make it a little bit difficult to navigate or a little bit difficult to walk. Uh, you kind of find yourself getting a little bit seasick where now you are more <coughs> direct contact with the water than even on the boat. You head off in the direction that you indicate, right? Yeah. Using that one stone, which disappears from the water periodically and is not really a good water, uh, not a good uh, uh, landmark for most. Uh, silly question. When you say one stone, you mean like one stone like far in the distance, like yeah, an island, right? Not like no, a, a stone. Okay. It appears to be about a foot and a half wide, uh, oblong in shape, and just piercing up above the waves once in a while. Okay, so like random cone shape. Thing. That must be it. Okay. You can't see the rest of it below the water, but you see that one thing, and you remember that from your from your time before as kind of popping up. Okay. You realize, though, too, that this is probably low tide. At high tide, it would be invisible. Yeah. So it's not not a great landmark in general, and they don't seem to use it at all. Well, this is useful. Start heading off in that direction. By your estimation, it's going to be about 20 minutes of walking first before you're even close to where the ship went down. Good. Okay. You head off and start walking. Um, 
the clouds get thicker and thicker. It looks like it's probably going to rain today on top of everything else. A little bit of cold wind blows in. I get an indication the seasons are changing. But you arrive. Hmm? Anytime that he looks like he's peering around, uh, why not? I'm going to hit him with guidance. Okay. Cool. Um, you have a decent idea of where it is. The, the shifting landscape of the water itself makes it probably the most difficult of all. Um, below you, you do actually make out the the uh, little silvery lights of fish that are curious as to what's passing over them. Uh, but anywhere you're, you're stepping, they they quickly vanish and move move aside. Uh, Elzara, if there's any like large fish with large teeth approaching from underneath, you, you'd notice them in time to warn us, right? This is your thing. <laughs> I can try. They're underwater, though. I have shape water. Mm-hmm. And I can keep up to two non-instant effects going at a time. Can I just smooth out the water ahead of me? I believe so, yeah. Cool. In that case, perfect. I'm not going up and down. Sadly, I can't do it for anyone else, but... Uh, I'll walk very closely behind Tyler. Same, same. <laughs> I mean, shape water is is only five feet. Yeah, uh, Mike. Yeah, so it, basically, it can just sort of affect like where I'm going. But uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, it literally, is one step in front of you mm-hmm. uh, that you keep casting this over and over again. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's an instantaneous spell as well. So yeah, you kind of smooth out the path in front of you. Uh, by the time anyone else tries to step in your shadow, like mm-hmm. Elzera, it's already returned back yep. to and probably actually even worse because the waves that were built up around it still <laughs> needed to, to, to rise. Uh, but yeah, you kind of effectively have this sort of semi-tunnel you know, with the waves mm-hmm. that you lead that no one else can follow in. Uh, and as I said, about 20 minutes pass. Um, you have seen some larger uh, fish, uh, some considerably larger fish that seem to be drifting through uh, about eight feet long. Uh, they look fairly slender, and then you see them kind of turn and realize they're like almost two or three feet uh, wide. They're just vertical in the in the water span in the water. Uh, and then you come to a point where you see a small piece of wood floating, and realize the the ship went down right around here. Okay. And indeed, a little bit of debris still seems to hang here in the water. Uh, most of it must have uh, gone away, but. Uh, some of it is light enough that the the waves actually just keep tossing it up and pu- putting it back down without actually carrying it away. So you believe you're in the right location. Right. Now you look back and you can see that the small ship that you came on looks much, much smaller in the distance. It mm-hmm. hasn't moved much. All right. So we have to get this done before they leave, I guess. Okay. Uh, everybody ready for splashdown? Uh, I will cast Alter Self on myself. Okay. What kind of alter self are you doing? The the water swim speed. One. Okay. So your fingers all now have small amounts of webbing between them. Small gills appear in the back of your neck. And you look distinctly fish like now. I would just Jumping the water walk? Water. Yeah. <laughs> you all plunge into the water. It's cold. It's very cold. Uh, instantly you are soaked all the way down to your skins. What did you do with your books? Hmm? Don't I have like the water or fireproof book? You have a fireproof book. I don't yeah. know if it's waterproof or not. Well, I would have sealed it like with whatever. I think it's fire and water. Is it fire and water? Yeah. Okay. Um, presumably you didn't take anything else that would be bothered no, by water. No, like Zekas would have thought about the fact that they were going deep underwater. <laughs> you do feel uh, a somewhat soggy sensation in your pocket, however. Yeah. Which is the sand that you grabbed earlier? Mm-hmm. I think it's soaked with water. Yeah. There's now What's mud it? in your in your pocket. <laughs> but all I of you are, seal that in the pouch. Though, so. All of you are plunged into the water. Uh, again, it is very very cold, very very bracing. And for a moment there, um, once the water kind of climbs up above your heart, there's that that seizing feeling that happens. Even though you can breathe it, and even that takes a moment to kind of remember. I can breathe this. Um, the strange sensation of the water flowing into your lungs and not being painful uh, takes a moment to overcome it. But... And Zekas would have also, like, upon hearing Quag say that Triton's like to steal your shit, would have secured, like, his spellbook and anything valuable to him a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. What kind of better? 
I don't know, just like an extra like not thread, like you know, that's like leather strings. Okay, a thong. Yeah. Make a slight of hand roll. Okay. Did I do the knots properly? Two. Looks great to you. Okay. Perfectly <laughs> tight. Won't drift off at all. That's on top of the regular like security. Yeah, but how much do you secure against waves? Anyway, the uh, you drop into the water. You're now uh, floating barely. Who actually can swim? You can swim, obviously. And you both have... Uh, I have athletics. Athletics? I'm assuming okay. that's a swimming thing. Yeah. It would fall under that. Uh, acrobatics to a certain degree, but it's really about trying to do it better. It's so if you, it's, it's if you want to do it synchronous with someone else. You use yeah. acrobatics. That's true. Yeah. Or make that dive. That's yeah, more of an acrobatic that's the thing. I so, think there's an entire page on underwater stuff in the PHP. There is. There's a whole bunch of stuff in a whole bunch of places. I guess like I swim like a normal person because I don't have any bonuses to it, but I don't. I also don't have any negatives. So, so I got plus one acrobatics. Uh, so for swimming, it's half of your walk speed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Unless you have a swim speed. Gotcha. So fifteen. Yeah. I 15, have a ring of swimmy swim. So you're activating the ring. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I activate it before we go splash down. Okay. As the person making the splash down happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wait, what do you do with that? And uh, yeah, as you go under the water, it is a little bit weird. The air escapes from your lungs. You see the bubbles pop up, and then you're still breathing. Talking mm-hmm. is a little bit weird, and you actually find it difficult to talk because you have to actually talk through water, but you are able to be heard. It doesn't carry very far. It's a little bit like talking into uh, a thick mist, almost, okay. where you also get that same effect of sound getting deadening before it actually leaves it a little bit further on. Mm-hmm. The water pours into your ears. You can kind of hear it burbling a little bit. But otherwise, you find yourselves underwater. It's very dark below you. Are you going deeper? Yeah. That's the, the point. Okay. I start going deeper, and everybody swims right by me. Okay. It's true. <laughs> the three of them do outpace you pretty quickly. Um, Clark, you kind of look back and remember what it was to be slower than everyone else. Mm. But now you're keeping pace quite quite easily. Okay. Um, Clark will probably find a middle spot. Like he'll drop back so that you can see mm-hmm. everybody. Okay. It's easy enough. Um, you quickly drop down 25, 30 feet, 40 feet. The water pressure starts to increase a little bit. Pop your ears. Um, you start to uh, well, that doesn't really work all the while. <laughs> it's literally all air, all water, all through you now. Uh, if anything, that just lets the water go through the, your ear canals as well. Uh, but uh, it gets colder, and you really start to think it's going to get a lot colder from here on out. It also gets a lot darker. Uh, at this point, at about 50 feet, you're now experiencing what would be dim light. Okay. So those of you who can see in uh, dark vision can see normally, but it is starting to get a little bit less color. There's not a lot to see, to be honest. Um, I have a question. Mm-hmm. I can do... Uh, never mind. <laughs> I can do nothing. Never mind. All right, then. Well, you succeed at doing nothing. Yeah. It's, it's pretty easy at this point. I do. So I got dark vision 60, and I got blind sight 1, or 10. Right. So that should hopefully help a little bit. Yep, the blind sight allows you to... And normally that would be hearing-based, right. and there is a little bit of hearing-based, but it's also tactile-based at this point. You can kind of feel with your Currents skin and any, and divert, any, any move, motion in the water itself. Kay. Not very far away, but as far farther away than you can swing, and right. hopefully farther away than they can swing to you. Okay. Uh, the dark vision gives you a little more vision beyond, but there's not a lot around you. In fact, one of the few things each of you can make out is each other. Mm. The water continues on deeper. I'm going to send a message over to uh, Zacchaeus. Uh, do you have a light spell? No, but I have the drift globe. So I'll grab that and. Okay. Okay. It would make us visible to any predators. Yeah, uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm wondering if it's strong enough to follow us in the water. Well, we'll find out. Oh, blub, 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 the command word. Okay. Uh, the drift globe floats up. I'm assuming you're using normal light yeah. from the drift globe. Uh, it begins to illuminate and glow a little bit. It's quite visible to all of you, but you also see it doesn't eliminate that far uh, mm-hmm. because it is uh, literally an oppressive darkness of, this, of, the, of the water around you. Um, and it does follow behind you, but it follows at half of its speed. 
So you find yourself, you and it are about the same speed. Okay. Everybody else is twice as fast as it and you. Well, they can't outswim me too far, otherwise they have no light. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you continue to go straight down? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll stick with Zacchaeus' speed. Okay. Again, it gets colder. Um, you start to shiver a little bit as the as the the heat is leached out of you. At this point, approximately 90 or 120 feet. It's really hard to tell the distance at this particular point. But you look upward, glance upward, and there's almost no indication of sky above you. Uh, the water itself is thick enough and dark enough that there's only the faintest glow that comes in that direction, far outweighed by the glow from the drift globe itself. Um, you continue to swim downward, 100 feet maybe. You see more uh, wreckage that seems to be here. Looks like stuff that was heavier. Mm -hmm. um, looks like a, a, uh, a barrel of some kind that's sort of semi-bobbing. Uh, it's floating kind of in the water itself, but somewhat heavy enough that it holds itself down, but not heavy enough to float, or not light enough to, to float up. Is there any markings on it? I'll bring the drift globe closer to it. Uh, it does not have any markings on it. You can see a, uh, a crack along the outside where it probably got crushed a little bit from either being thrown off or when the, the ship itself went down. Okay. There's no indication of bottom still. You do see some curious small fish who come swimming over in your direction. One larger one, about the size of your hand, swims over to the drift globe and tries to bite at it unsuccessfully. Drift globe seems unaffected. Continue downward. Yep. Now the chill is significant. If you spend a lot of time down here, you're going to have some issues. As it is, you find some circulation uh, that you need. You're actually having no problems whatsoever because your altered form is used to adapting to the water itself. Even in your form, though, you do know that if it gets much colder than this, it could be an issue, but at the moment, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you start to see uh, the bottom. It is a rough surface across the bottom. You're not sure exactly how far you are, but judging from where the way you had done the uh, water, the water was at least 100 feet deep, so you're well below that. You see the cracked back half of the ship. Was the cannon on the back half, middle, or front half? It was in the middle. Okay. So I'll go towards uh, the middle of the back half, or at least look towards there. Let me finish describing Sorry. here, and you'll, you'll be able to. <laughs> but as you, you see, uh, there are uh, a couple of corpses, uh, the bodies of the hobgoblins who were there. Uh, one of them still gripping his sword in hand. It's a long, thin, slightly curved sword. Uh, the armor itself is elaborate. Uh, you can't make out the color uh, we're now almost uh, beyond dim light into uh, darkness, essentially. There's no light except for, well, actually, sorry, the drift globe there, it becomes dim light. Uh, as you can make out this armor, and I, rather than describe it because all of us have a common basis, uh, understand it to be somewhat like the fearsome samurai armor, uh, designed to intimidate and to frighten, but also designed to be elegant, and get out of the way of the fighter when they're fighting. But their body is just sort of floating there, missing a leg. It looks like there's a little bit of flesh on the edge of it, as though it had been torn off. The boat itself, the back half of the boat, sits there. It's uh, uh, got a, a, a wooden uh, emblem on the back. You're not familiar with the emblem, but actually from the, from the book, the cheeses of Karavenka. <laughs> you actually recognize the the the, uh, the hobgoblin empire symbol. This is an imperial ship. This is not just a random ship. Um, this would have been part of presumably the imperial navy. Um, but the back half is there, buried. Ahead of it, about twenty feet. At this point, it's really hard to tell distance, but uh, appears to be a dark scar in the ground. Uh, it's about 15 feet wide. It spreads as you look and you can see it spread underneath you and up ahead for as long as you can see. It looks like a, an actual a ravine in the water itself. Does not appear to be any other part of the boat here and only two of the corpses. Clark would like to go over and try to very carefully pry that sword away from this dead person's hand. 
I, I've looked and it, to search. And in websites. doing so, he'd yeah. like to put a foot up at its neck so it doesn't try to bite him for some reason. Okay. Because he's he's cautious about these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if that's still here, it means the Tritons haven't been here yet. Yeah. Or they were occupied with something else. Uh, yeah. The first thought seems less dangerous. So you said uh, the cannon was in the back half of the ship. The cannon was in the middle, in the middle, middle of the ship. Yeah, this I mean the back half of this half. And No, this is the back half of the ship. The cannon was in the middle of the ship. The right. cannon is in the bottom of the cannon. Canyon. Probably. Canyon. Ravine. Yeah, that's Ravine. Okay. Damn. You go over and kind yeah. of swim over to the, the body. Up close you can see now that most of the flesh seems to have been stripped off of the body in only a day. Right. Um, you can actually see dozens of tiny little fish that are gathered around. As you get closer and kind of grip onto the sword, there's a flurry of motion as they all move away and then swim towards you. Mm. Um, what is your AC? Uh, 17 currently? Uh, 13 now, excuse me. As they begin to swarm all over you. Cool. Taking small little nibbles. Ooh, maybe not as small as I thought. That was a good roll. Uh, for 17 points of damage, as you feel your skin being torn in tiny little spots. They're swimming in and around your own armor. Uh, you can feel them kind of gripping onto your fingers and onto your arms as well. Mm. Uh, they've got tiny little teeth, but you're now essentially uh, swarmed. Okay. Uh, Elzara, you were there to look, look at the corpse, and you could see now that this sudden flash of motion and all these tiny little silver fish are swarming all over uh, your friend. Yep, trying to find some an area effect thing. Give me two seconds. What do the rest of you do in the meantime? Mage armor comes up. <laughs> so I have all of 14 AC instead of 11. <laughs> Clark, you're good and at you, dex, right? Who knows? You also see a bit of a cloud forming around uh, him as his blood is leaking into the water around. Oh, no. That's not good. Yeah, uh, so I am going to say Emeryn heal him and cast Ice Knife at one of the, um, at some of the fish. Okay. Mm. Um, not at seventh level. At second. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Which to, uh, is, you go? This knife is a roll on my part to hit, try to hit, and then a deck save for cold damage. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, it is a disadvantage because they are swarming over Clark, and I'm assuming you don't want to hit Clark. No, she's blasting him. I, I am blasting the, the the swarm. Okay. So, and hoping that. He is good at, at deck saves. <laughs> so, oh right, it's a deck save, isn't it? So mm -hmm. it's to a thing to hit uh, a roll to, for me to hit the swarm. Yeah. Okay. And then they have to make a deck save for the cold damage. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. against the explosion. So what was your to hit? Uh, to hit was uh, what is the modifier? Uh, Twenty six. Okay. Yeah, you definitely hit. Uh, uh, I don't think Clark can get out of the way either, so you're hit with that as well. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, for three of the piercing damage. Was was the number 26? 26. I yep. beat that. Woo! Hmm? I beat that. No, that's, no, that's, yeah, that's, 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 the AC, that's the hit on your AC. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, your AC is not 26. No. Don't let, don't let, force me to restart my heart. After no, okay. Because <laughs> if you have an AC of 26, I'm in trouble. I assumed I was hit anyway, so I just rolled the save. Ah. You roll the save regardless. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So you take the three piercing, was it? Three yeah. piercing. Okay. Um, and then uh, hit, hit or miss, the shards explode. The target and each creature within five feet must succeed a dex save or take uh, 3d6 cold damage. Okay. They did not succeed. I might have. And I rolled three. <laughs> okay. Uh, one's on all of them. So, oh my God. Um, the initial strike um, hits probably Clark more than anything else, as you see them kind of rapidly move away and kind of almost hard, hide within Clark's own armor, uh, Clark's own armor to get away from it. Uh, the little uh, happens. Uh, you take the three cold damage. Okay. 
Uh, like yeah. No, no, he he, he doesn't oh, take save. the yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you only take half. Yeah. So no. Oh, it's, it's saber sack. It's, it's saber oh, sack okay. for, yeah, for the cold damage. If uh, you you hit this, you see a couple of the, the little uh, tiny uh, uh, fish kind of freeze in place and kind of float there. Good, but there's still a significant amount of them left. Screw those guys. I tried. Um, are the other two of you going to react to this, or are you uh, leaving it on some? I mm-hmm. I did ask Emron to to heal Clark. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, Casting anyway, a lightning yeah. bolt under, underwater might not go so well for anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know until you try. Um, I'll cast a level two uh, cure wounds. Yeah. Touch. And, uh, yeah. Nice. How close are you going to get for that? Mm. It's touch, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. I stuck an arm in. You just want him on the head. Mm-hmm. It's enough. Yeah. I rolled for crap. Uh, that's a uh, seven hit points. All right. That's some of the hit points I lost. Yep. I'm not too worried about you. Zachus, you have an opportunity here to do something. Fireball. I don't have fireball. I oh, doing... Also, fire isn't effective. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, doing... it's still effective. It's just, you know, it's still water. I haven't used this counter so long, I forget exactly how it goes. I would imagine the steam would be really painful. The explosion part might be that. that yeah, Jesus. yeah, that would be very bad. I, I will things, cast though. an acid splash so it does like two, hmm. two adjacent like. Mm-hmm. So three d six. Eight damage of acid. Uh, you have Towards. to hit. Clark. Oh right. <laughs> Fifteen plus. Ten, 10 or eleven so or something that does hit. Yeah. What is it? That's an AOE. No AOE of like a. It hits two targets, yeah, okay. technically. But I mean, if they're like swarming in the same location, like. yeah, they're swarming in Clark. Yeah. yeah. So you will hit Clark. Yeah. No. I'm okay. But it, it's the damage is kind of shitty, so it's like hopefully it's it'll take out the fish, but not Clark. <laughs> that is definitely a hope. Yeah. <laughs> so acid. So what's the damage? Uh, eight. Okay. All right. And do I have to do a thing? Uh. Nope. No. No. Actually. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, the target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d6 acid. Oh, okay, three. so it's not a two-hit roll. Oh, just, uh, well, then you missed. As they all go inside of his armor. No. Oh. How, how was your roll? Uh, I rolled a seven, and the dex save what gives me another eight, so 15. The save was 20. Okay. So I failed. So what was your save? Uh, yeah, 15. 15. His is like 18 or 19. Yeah. Unfortunately, it splashes over Clark, and you feel the edges of your skin burning. Mm. Uh, you also feel this weird wriggling sensation as there's dozens of these little things trying to hide themselves within your armor. How much was it? Eight. Okay. Back to where I was. Hooray! You pull your hand back just in time as you see some of them kind of sn- uh, snap jaws trying to swarm over to you, mm. but they do not. Uh, as for Clark, uh, 21 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Wow, okay. That's uh, another 19 points of piercing damage. Okay. As you can now feel them kind of biting, and the first layer of skin in some places has been bitten off, so now they're starting to bite onto the fibers of muscle underneath. Yeah. It's getting extraordinarily itchy and, and, and uh, unfortunate. Okay. Everyone's tired of this shit. Uh, stupid piranha fish things. Quippers, technically. Mm hmm. Um. I'm going to uh, use Siphon Life. Okay. Because screw attack rolls. Mm, okay. Uh, I'm going to hit them with basically 13 dice of drain life. Can you hit something you can't see? Because they are currently mm. squirming underneath his armor. Okay, then I wait for them to come out. Okay. So you're going to hold that until. Um, hmm. What kind of armor are you wearing? I believe it's leather right now. It's not not my nice stuff. Okay. Uh, um, I will check to be sure. How big are the fish then? That big. They're tiny. Okay. Um, well, in fact, there's dozens of them. Is the problem? Um, uh. Mm, you're right. I mean, we can't hit them if we can't see them. Yeah. So. Don't worry. If we let them eat you, 
then once you're dead, they leave your armor, we can kill them, and then I'll resurrect you. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Underwater. <laughs> I'm more worried about the blood. Yeah, that too. Mm. Well. And yeah, after that last strike, there's even more blood flowing in, kind of obscuring the area. Uh, right now, Clark is actually even harder to see because of the blood is surrounding him. I am going to give him a level four healing word, or level three. Uh, so that's eight, nine, plus four. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. So, uh, 13. 13? Okay, thank you. No. Um, and that's the, you don't have to be close to him to do that. So I do not. Uh, and yeah, I, I can't will. do anything. Uh, actually, 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 for an action. While she's thinking of that, mm-hmm. anyone else have anything in mind? Uh, yeah. Um, get ready to hit them with something big. Before that, I have an idea. Uh, minor illusion. A large fish that looks threatening, that's probably a predator of these small fish, as a minor illusion. I'll like, put that right next to Clark so the little fish gets scared and fuck off out of his armor. Make a nature check. All right. Six plus six, so that's twelve. Okay. So, you cast Minor Illusion? Yep. Okay. Uh, large fish! Large fish appears right beside beside uh, Clark. Clark. Uh-huh. Clark will go blah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit surprising. Do the little fish come out? They do not. What about the strange, like, and sudden motion that Clark made? Is that enough to evict them from his armor? Or? Uh, it's almost as though they're used to squirming, struggling creatures that they're attacking. They don't seem to react to the illusion whatsoever. God damn it. Belatedly afterwards, you think, they probably don't really see all that well. Yeah. Um, and they're also enclosed in a, in, in a cloud of blood right now, so even if they could smell it, they've got a banquet on hand. Can I ask uh, a silly question? Sure. How do you calculate AC without armor? It is 10. 10, ten plus, plus, plus your dex modifier. Dex modifier, yeah. dex modifier. okay. It does take a bit of time to okay. take off armor. That's why I have 13. There is no armor. Yeah. No armor? No. Oh, that's we haven't had clothes. armor for a month now. Yeah, yeah. so it's under your clothes, which is yeah. even worse. Yeah. But a lot easier to take off. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, I think it's their turn. Well, you had something, because that was a bonus uh, action to do the, the well, word. There was nothing yeah. I can do other than, like, smack Clark. Well, if that was a bonus action... If you can get ready to attack them, I can do something about getting them out of here. I... Well, I have a swim speed. Uh, well, I mean, like, if you, uh, even Ice Knife again might... Uh, I can't, because Healing Word is a spell. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. I have Thorn Whip. <laughs> um, <laughs> thorn Whip. Thorn, thorn Whip. Fish. Hey, hey, one little fish. One if little it'll fish. do damage. Oh, yeah. fair enough. Um. Yeah, I am going to. <laughs> Thorn uh, whip is ready. <laughs> I'm going to use shape water. Okay. To uh, control the flow of the water in the square or the cube that he's in, okay. and make it flow out. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, Clark. sucking all the fish with it. All right. Um. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So you draw all the water which mm-hmm. direction? The left of them. The left? So where no one is or where someone is? Uh, where no someone one is. Farther away. Okay. Or in front of them, in case he wants to punch them or all something. Right. I could be really mean in the interpretation of that, but I won't, mm. because technically a body is 75% water. But uh, <laughs> you're dehydrated. From I can't see the water, though. No. Uh, so yes, you feel this weird sensation as all the water around you flows suddenly off to the left. 
Uh, they <laughs> will try to hold on. Uh, you will also have to make a dexterity sure. saving throw. Why not? Because you're suddenly in a void in the middle of, a, of an ocean. A void. Well, the other uh, water might get pulled into it. All I can do is control the flow. Well, you, you're basically parting the water at this point. Well, I'm just oh, so it's control water, water, not... Uh, not yeah, uh, I'm just doing the cantrip shape water. Yeah. Uh, well, it still will potentially throw you around, mm. but yep. they're also going to try to hold on. That was terrible. That was a pair of fours. That was not a uh, a good roll. Uh, as uh, so, what did you get for your twenty nine? Twenty nine. Uh, you managed to kind of stick a hand out in the water that's not moving and mm-hmm. kind of use it to to, to, to paddle yourself. Oh. And suddenly, everything around you flows outward, including dozens of these tiny little fish and uh, a big uh, uh, in essentially half concealed in a cloud of blood of your own that's trailing out behind you. But they are now in a different different section. Mm. Uh, you can feel the itching all over. However, they, are, as like, they were biting three feet away from you. All right. I would like to get away with my new sword. Uh, we well, haven't had a chance to actually get the sword out of his hand yet. His hand was gripped tight around it in a death grip. Okay. Um, but you can do that as a, okay. as a moment. Uh, but I believe we have a thorn whip. <laughs> it's, Yay, cantrips. This is kind of the weirdest thing. Because oh uh, technically... Oh, wow, really? I haven't rolled uh, ten this entire year. Roll me another d20, please. Five. Five. Okay. Uh, as the thorn whip goes out, but just as all of these things move to the left and Clark moves to the right, it catches Clark. So uh, uh, roll your damage as a little thorn whip goes out, just missing the end of one of these nasty <laughs> snappers, uh, and then catching your your arm as you're pulling and withdrawing from it. Of course. Of course. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. However, with thorn whip, you do pull him, I yes, believe. Yes, you're now closer to me. Okay. <laughs> you're Another five few feet away feet? from... Uh, yeah, so you're now about almost eight feet, ten feet almost uh, away from them uh, as they, they turn and spin in their own crazed madness. Uh, ten feet. Ten feet closer to me. No. Okay. You, yeah. You, you, were, no, you were at least ten feet away, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so now you find yourself kind of outside of that, still trailing some of the blood through the water okay. as you're still actually bleeding. Um, you can take an action. Cool. What would you like to do? Uh... Dagger, sword, bunk. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna swim back towards where? The I assume thing is. I haven't let go. It's okay. not. It's not tethered to anything. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It's just kind of floating along. along. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Hand. It's 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 the the hand probably was gripping tighter and tighter as this guy died, mm. which gives you that momentary realization of how he probably died. He survived the ship going down. Yeah held on to his breath, maybe even had some way of magically holding on to his life. Mm. Then those things attacked, and he was holding on to the sword to the very last minute. You even see there's a little bit of, of a smudge on the edge of the blade. He'd hit something with it, uh, and at some point he also lost a leg. Right. The combination of things gives you a little bit of, of pause. As you creak open the, the last few of the fingers, a little bit of flesh still stringing along the fingers, uh, and pull out this blade. It gives the body a kick. And, <laughs> Kind of kick off as you as you pull yeah. back with this new sword. Stick the sword in the belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, yeah, it's a very very thin sword. The blade itself is only about that wide. Okay. Very very uh, thin. Very well made. Uh, it looks like it has an ornamental uh, uh, handle on it. It's got a square. Um, I wish I knew the terms, but a square uh, block at the end of where the handle is guard. before the blade guard. Thank you. Um, and yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay. No. The Zakis. So I see the uh, swarm of minnows. Uh, I forget the exact name. Quippers. 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 The swarm of quippers is no longer near Clark, so I'll acid blast them again. All right. So I think it's just a save versus my Yeah. Yep. Save. They rolled really well last time and rolled a one this time. Woo. So there you go. One's all around. And I got one, two, three, four, seven acid damage. Seven? Over two squares, so um, that'll okay. be enough to get the entire swarm, hopefully. It, it will kill a large number of them, yes. Um, as you, as the acid kind of flows out into the into the water, taking this sort of bulbous shape. And you see now, out of the out of that, uh, several of them are kind of melting away and, and kind of sinking or half floating downward. And the remaining half dozen or so all vanish off into the, into the distance, getting the hell away from whatever the hell this was. Yes. Leaving this floating kind of acid in the water for a moment until the spell dissipates and then it goes away. Um, now, all of you can make perception checks. Uh, I, have to find I still have 
Hey, a 17. <laughs> that dice doesn't have to go in dice Water? trash. Where? Uh, I don't think I know where they are. This is not a library. I don't know why I didn't think of this one here. Perception. 19 total. It's too bad. You don't know how long I've waited for this moment and then realized I don't have it ready anyway. Where'd you go? I don't like this. Is it the big black thing that I borrowed? No. Okay. No. Because I really should bring that back too. Is it something that can be found in here? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? We'll use that one. <laughs> so, what was the perception checks? Nineteen total. Thirteen. Do you want ask his expect? Oh yeah, ask physics is not involved in this conversation. <laughs> At least twenty-six, maybe more. All right. In the neighborhood. Okay. Okay. So, the cloud of uh, blood in front of you. Actually, it's not good. Would that, would that have gotten dissolved a little bit by the acid splasher? Uh, oh, here we go. Let me get somewhere. Use that guy, too. Hang on. Um... Sorry, the blood is flowing in a pool in front of you. Uh, and uh, what distracts Amrun that he doesn't notice anything else going on? Is it just that or something else? Hey, where'd Clark go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Uh, Clark, kind of tumbling over backwards, gets a good look upward. And he's the first to notice, soon followed by Elzara and Zakis, a shark. Yeah. And then another one. I do also have another one. Do you have another one? Perfect. Whoa. Nope. Here's the sad part. So way back when I bought a whole lot of sharks. You were going to make a shark name. I can't find any of them, except for one. So, in the center of all of this, and yes, this is still a shark. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. In the center of that, please place all of, your, all of you guys. I don't know if this is a mini we're needing over there. It is. Look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be beside Clark. Yep. And Amron is uh, facing that way. Oh, hey, there's Clark. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to write these down. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Uh, they are all the same kind of shark, despite what they look like there. So much for multiculturalism. <laughs> As you suspect, it's probably a hunting pod, essentially. Uh, okay. Do they all wear the same jackets? Now, roll yes, initiative. <sighs> initiative. All right. And I'm going to treat them as a hunting pod, so they're all going to fight at the same time. So, 25 to 30. I think some of you are capable of that. Uh, 20 to 25. Not know that. 15 to 20. The bomb's gone. Ooh. Uh, 10 to 15. 12. <laughs> okay. So we have Elzera on 12. And I'll switch. Remind me to switch the map pack in a second here. Uh, 10. Uh, Do you five know to ten. Water, water fighting rules for people without swim speed. I have no uh, idea. It's a disadvantage on all attacks uh, yeah. except for uh, javelins, spears, anything that makes a, a direct kind oh. of motion through. Yeah. Uh, so I have one eight, of those things. Eight and four. Okay. Uh, eight and four. Then we'll switch to the map view for those of you at home. You also need to switch those there and Clark. I think Clark got Clark got a 12, Clark got a 8. I, like I got a 10. Oh, you got a 10. Yeah, you got a 10. So you're So I think I got the... It's been a while since I've had to do this, but the perspective should be backwards from me where this is the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fastest to the slowest. Okay. Yeah. Well... They're number one. That's, that means it's there to go first. Uh, let's see. We'll start with the uh, dinosaur. <laughs> Goes in after Emrin. Sure. Uh, Amarun hasn't taken any damage. Nope. Body 15 will hit. Nope. Hmm? Those are the exceptions. Oh, sorry, uh, 25. Mm -hmm. That will hit. Mm -hmm. 
dagger, dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident. Okay. Glaive's not on that list. That's okay. For 24 points of piercing damage as it chomps down on you. Uh, and then oh, hey, uh, shark. pulls back uh, a, a, a chunk out of you. Uh, but otherwise, uh, well, kind of continues to swim around. So it'll swim around a little bit more. Uh, just basically to the side of you. So it swims just circling you a little bit. So it's still facing you, real still close to you. Right. Okay. You yep. Uh, let's go for the hammerhead. Hammerhead will go after Elzera. So it swims in towards you. Uh, oh, God. Blue. That is a 24 to hit. Oh, it hits. Uh, is it? No, I'm not rolling a d20 for damage. That would be really cruel and weird. Mm. Uh, that is uh, 22 pier- points to piercing damage as it again kind of chomps down on you and it continues to kind of circle halfway around. So put it to that side of her. Like that? Yep. Uh, let's see. The one up on high, the great white, swims in towards uh, Zacchus. I'm sorry. Uh, that is only a 15 to hit. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> oh, okay. Everything hits. <laughs> Even with me, Charmer. Uh, let's see. For 13 points of piercing damage. A low roll, uh, and then the other one swims in towards Zacchus as well. Zacchus or me? Cause I'm uh, actually you, because you're closer. Yeah. That is a twenty-three to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad I didn't give you guys these things earlier. They're scary. Uh, that is. Oh wow. Uh, no, that can't be right. Thirty points of piercing damage. What? It is a shark, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's 54 points in one round. Yeah. So that was them. They're obviously attracted by the blood in the water. Mm. And now much more blood, as each of you have now been been hurt. Elzera, you're up first. I don't even know what to do. Uh... <laughs> As these sharks are, while represented on the map, essentially a static, what's really happening is they're kind of floating a little bit in the area, circling a little bit and diving in, and then kind of yeah. sw- looping back around to staying close. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm going to say if we're done here, we should maybe put uh, Water Walk back up. Uh, and I am going to. But the Widen. cannon. I, I don't care about the cannon. Honestly, I care about my life much more. If you guys want to hold your actions till I go, I can. Uh, no, never mind. It's not gonna work. What? I was gonna use control water, but it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll make that general suggestion, and uh, grab my scimitar. Okay. And you will be at disadvantage using the scimitar. Underwater. I have a swim speed. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you know how to use the the water. Actually, same goes for you and your ring. Mm-hmm. That's the the catch swim speed. Uh, so that is a twenty four to hit. Twenty four is definitely a hit. Which one are you going after? That's uh, the hammerhead. The, the one that's right by me. Okay. Oh, that's a seven on damage. Yay. So that is a nine. All right, the scimitar drags into it, taking some blood, a bloody chunk out of it. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to suggest we, uh, if you, you want to cast Water Walk again, and I'm going to cast Healing Word on who's who looks the worst right oh, now. Oh, uh, the scale is a little bit off here. These are actually about 20 to 30 feet long. Oh, <laughs> I okay. just, re- just realized So they're that huge, not large. So they're huge, yeah. Yeah, yeah pardon me. Um... But yeah, who's looking the worst off right now? Probably Emrin. Yeah. Emrin. Uh, he is getting a level 4 healing word. Alright. And what's the word? Mm-hmm. Get us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one 
13. 13, all right. Are you gonna stay where you are? Uh, I attacked it. You did? I am going to uh, go away from it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where would you like to go? Uh, I know the distance for uh, the range for water walk. What is it? I think it's people within 30 feet of me. Okay, so I will stay within 30 feet of Amarun, but get as far away from the shark as possible. Basically. I, yeah. So we could it. come over here, yeah. maybe. If they're all like circling around, like not always next to us, how does attacks of opportunity work? Um, they are staying within range okay. for that. Thereabouts? Uh, or a little so further. So that I'm within 30 feet of Amarun. Uh, five squares. Yep. 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 Alright, so you book it. The shark's now angry that's both lost a bit of a meal and gotten a bit of a bite back. They're not supposed to bite back. Why are they biting back? The shark has an existential moment, but then it is Clark's turn. Yay! I would like to stab st uh, the shark thing. Okay, you're going to use the sword you had just No, pulled? that's in the belt. Okay. I still have a dagger in my hand, though. Okay. Let's use that. All right. That is the, the hammerhead in front of you? Yeah. All right. And daggers do not have disadvantage. Yay! because no, it's real close. Pirates. Is, it, is the one with radiant? It is. Yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's not great. Um... Uh, this is math. 13, 14. 14 is a hit. Cool. They are large I and... I would like to do damage, please. They're not slow moving, but they are staying uh, right there. Does this many? Oh, sorry. Uh, four, six, seven. Seven regular ass damage. Okay. And one more radiant. All right, a little, little uh, dagger goes pew yeah. as it lights up. I'm going to hit him again. All right, then. Stabby, stabby. Die, yeah. shark, die. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, math again. 13. 13 is a hit. Cool. Do it again. Uh, regular ass damage is maxed out again. So that's uh, 7. Okay. And the radiant is going to be one other one. So another eight. Eight. You're seeing flashes of light. Yeah. yeah. Stabity, 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 stabity. The thing is huge. That's okay. Literally huge. But uh, you're finding a, a spot just just uh, kind of on the side of its of its uh, neck to stab I it. I have a car. question. Yep. Can I use my action surge to grapple it? Yeah. Uh, sure. Cool. You can certainly try. All right. I will spend an action uh, surge to do that. Let's, let's see. Not wanting to be grappled is an ac uh, athletics. I think in this case, does it not want to be grappled? Does it think that? Uh, generally. Sharks are pretty dumb. It might be pretty dumb. Ooh. It's a shame that grappling is not a thing that I like to do a lot. Um, I got a, let's see here, proficiency? It's, it's your it's your athletics. acrobatics or athletics. Okay. Depending Excuse on how you me. wish to try to grapple. Uh, well, it's definitely athletics. Thirty-one. <laughs> well, it was not a great roll for it to begin with, but thirty-one is really hard to compare with. Cool. As you kind of lever yourself up with the blade yeah. and grapple onto the body of this yes. thing, it's thrashing and twisting. That's fine. But unable to shake. We're going to ride this thing. All right. Because it go. can't bite me if I'm on it. There you go. Uh -huh. It is. Uh, it is. Clark Shark Rider. Hooray! Uh, I'm assuming you're not moving. So okay. Good balance. I'm Rune. Hmm. Well, um, I am going to cast Water Walk on the four of us again. Okay. Which will give us a 60 feet vertical movement. All right. Um, Make a strength check. Sure. Happy to. Well, I, yeah. I don't know how hard it's going to pull on him. It's just anyone who's free floating. Is going it's to 60 free. feet motion, so it's pretty yeah. fast. 21. 21. You managed to hold on Sweet. to the shark, but you can feel your body That's leavening okay. up we're as gonna, if it wants to push we're up We're going to suplex this thing on the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of you, you feel the effect of water walk immediately. 
the cannon. Uh, however, is it on? It's on your turn. You actually start moving. I okay. believe. Uh, probably. It's the only way to really keep it making any sense. Uh, Zakis. Yeah. Uh, no, oh. I have. Uh, oh, all right. Good stuff. I am going to healing word. No, I can't. Sorry, that's a spell. Um, I am going to use uh, sight for life. All right. Because these things I can see. You can. Uh, not the one that Clark is currently wrapped around. Uh, but uh, hmm. we'll be taking four dice, four dice, five dice. Uh, the one on Zacchaeus is five dice. All right. There's a Constitution saving throw. Yes. What was the difficulty? Uh, Seventeen. Okay. We'll start with the uh, the dinosaur. Uh, gets a twenty-two. Okay. Uh, the uh, one beside it. Oh shoot! No, never mind. I can't do this. I, I was trying oh, to do a bonus effect. action, but that was a spell. And no, this is a regular action. So never mind. I can't okay. Do it. Okay. Uh, I would just uh, swim up forty feet. Okay. The two of them will get a chance to react. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, you're not having all of your hit points. Were you cast Water Walk, you would have moved 60 feet up anyway. Possibly. Yeah, on your turn, you would, it would start yeah. immediately. Yeah, for you, it would start immediately, and non, mm -hmm. like, non-voluntary movement does not provoke... Yeah, that's kind of weird. It is voluntary, though, because he, he did it himself. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Interesting question. Yeah, nobody else affected by the Water Walk would be, so would I be. Is basically it, mm. I think. Yeah. Because um, usually it's using your movement. Yeah, I mean, normally it's, yeah, if you're moved on, on someone else's turn, it doesn't. So it probably right. no. does. I mean, you, 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 excel, you float upward 60 feet, uh, and both of them take snapping out of you, but nobody, they could not anticipate you moving, so it, it happens. Um, so uh, you're effectively 60 feet up. And then I move another 40. Okay. That's my actual movement. Um... Okay. No, I don't move the extra 40 because then I definitely can't see anybody and I might have to. So I, I just move up the 60. Okay. Even at 60, it's dim light to see them, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Uh, although you can see the dark. So it's yep. normal. It's at the edge of my, yep. my vision. Though. Yeah. Uh, Zakis, you feel this levity in you and you start floating up 60 feet. Rocketing, really. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's faster <laughs> than you can probably move. Fuck the cannon! Yeah, I realize what's happening, and it's like, well, I can't do anything, so I'm just gonna float up. Although, you, you can, you can still, it. yeah, you can, you can resist it. You can swim against it. Although at the speed at which it's going, you can't actually go that fast in the machine. <laughs> no, but you could it, just but. flat out attempt to resist it. But if I'm ruin is going, I mean, up. I can't force someone to go uh, to have water walk if. Uh, if they don't want to, uh, I suppose it's willing. So you could you could negate the effect if you mm -hmm. want. Well, if I stay down here by myself, then I'm probably screwed. If you stay down here with the rest of us, you're probably screwed too. I'll just complain about the cannon and like, mm -hmm. why are we abandoning the quest? We can take them. And the shark kind of snaps at you, but you float up sixty feet as well. Are you taking an action? Clark's got a shark in a headlock. I'll uh, magic <laughs> missile the shark that's in a headlock. Uh, well, okay. it's a shark well, headlock. Well, it's a, it's a headlock. <laughs> shark lock? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do it on that one. It's coming with me, dammit. Find its gills and stick a hand in. Yeah. That will uh, make it want to go away. It's true. So 10 damage magic. Okay. Yep. You see it strike the uh, shark pretty handily, easily missing Clark, and you, yeah. you feel the thing kind of take the impact of these multiple Excellent. Bursts. Uh, as you float on upward, uh, it's their turn. So the two that were near Amrun uh, swim upward quickly, mm -hmm. easily overtaking him. Uh, What's their speed? Their speed is fifty, and they are running. So they are okay. they are up actually even with you. Okay, that's uh, fine. At this point, they know you're moving, so you you would take an attack of opportunity for moving out of their space. Uh, because they know you're moving, it's a predictable path at this point, unless you actively move out of the way. Um, 
uh, so the two of them are, are surrounding you. The other one goes after uh, Zakis, swims upward and swims quickly, gets to you. That's all it can do. Uh, the other one, however, has a passenger does not like. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, swims over towards the ship, trying to scrape you off of its back. Oh, cool. Uh, actually, no, it's a huge creature. You can't prevent its movement. Probably not. Uh, yeah. uh, if it was large or smaller, you could actually it would actually not be able to move, which yeah. would be really kind of funny. But uh, it will attempt to scrape you off. All right. Uh, it somewhat clumsily moves over to the ship. Uh, this is going to be acrobatics versus your either acrobatics or athletics, basically uh, to break. Definitely the athletics. Uh, and see what it can do. Eh, that's bad. <laughs> Uh, 28. Yeah, no. Uh, you easily kind of keep moving around it as it kind of uh, swims over and kind of bounces off the edge of the ship. You can see the, the piece of ship that's there kind of shift a little bit as it okay. hits it because it is extraordinarily strong. Um, so I've, I've then descended again. You're still holding on to it. Yes. Yeah. You basically. 60 feet up. Uh, well, it runs a hundred down. It, you're basically you, holding yourself. Yeah, from you moving. don't drag it. You are, yeah, no, yeah, I'm hanging on. I'm just yeah. wondering where the shark's going. The shark is basically the same level. Um, okay. It hasn't gone up at any. Yeah, higher. you can't move you, it. The the, uh, the force of which you are moving upward is not enough to move it. Right. Okay. Um, it's it's quite strong okay. uh, as far as that goes. As soon as I let go, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very likely. You okay. can feel that buoyancy in yourself and gotcha. that kind of pull, like a like an invisible rope, just ready to yank you out. Right. Uh, that's its turn. Uh, that's their turn. So, Elzera, you uh, feel yourself being flown upward unless you resist the spell. Uh, no, I'm going to let it happen. Clark, let's go. <laughs> He's too funny. He's having too much fun playing with the sharks. Mm -hmm. They can uh, easily follow us. <laughs> uh, actually, give me two seconds. <laughs> um, well, unless you resist the spell, you're like 60 feet up yeah, at that, that point. Yeah, that's the thing, but I might... I resist the spell and turn into a, a water elemental. Okay. Because then I can mm -hmm. I run the spell. Yep. Okay. Uh, that way, Clark is not left here alone with sharks. All right. You feel that buoyancy and then, then say, no, I'm better off on my own. I am water and become a water elemental. So wants to put the water elemental in the place. Ah. Look at that. And are you moving or are you staying? What are you going to do? Um, okay. I'm going to go closer to Clark. Okay. But like, but five yeah, feet from go. the shark. Okay. Like. <laughs> but five feet from it. There go. All right. Uh, that was a bonus and a move. Uh. You can club the shark if you want. I could. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll I'll club the shark. Okay. All I would suggest is don't roll a one because it would yeah. be bad. That's fine. You know what happens when people say that? <laughs> She's already rolled a one once. It's probably not going to happen again. Or maybe it's only if I say it. <laughs> it's only if you say it. Um, where's my... I haven't been in this form in a long time. Uh, that is a 16. That is a hit. Cool. As you club the shark on the side of the head. Uh, for the first attack, because it's multi-attack. Uh, I don't do the water elemental often. Uh, so that's three plus four. So that's some kind of practice. All right. Seven in total? Yeah. And then second attack. For more on the roll and another seven. All right. Nasty couple of clubs up the side of the head. You can see it uh, kind of shaking its head violently, trying to both release the thing there, but also kind of dazed a little bit by these sudden blows out of, from its perspective, maybe nothing at all. In fact, Clark, even though you know that you saw her change. Mm. She's actually really hard to see right now because her and the water aren't that her, much different. It's all the same. It's stuff. pretty much the same. Clark. That's yeah, stabby stabby. You have a uh, you have a, a, a tiger by the tail, so to speak. Yeah, well, we'll try to get that tiger. All right. Also, that's a crit. <laughs> also, you have sneak attack actually, on that crit. Uh, uh, maybe. I don't. Hold on. Uh, I need to double check something real quick here. You've got an ally in your body. Uh... And you're not a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are. We are only using one hand. Yeah, that's so true. So you have to I, have something to hang there's on a with. Thing, there's a thing here. I'm just not seeing it. Uh, champion. Crit on 19s. Mm -hmm. okay. So it is oh. great. Okay. Yep. Um, I guess we should roll damage. Yeah, and sneak attack. Okay, so there's double dice, and that's a radiant. 
And I'll need another radiant. Okay. And then I also need uh, oh, perfect. Thank you. Oh, an orc crit die. Yeah, an orc crit die as well. All right. So, and your sneak attack. And a sneak attack. Die. That would be d sixes later. Yeah. Okay. Um. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Second radiant. Twelve. Uh, you, you, so remember, you crit, you crit it. So all your oh, dice yes. are Okay, double. so twelve. Uh, and then the uh, that one, right? Um, and then the <laughs> stabby with the backs. I think it's three now. So you roll six of those. Yeah. So how much we say so far? Twelve. 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 Okay. Uh, Eleven. Twelve. That's twenty-four. And another twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay. So thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. 38. 38. Yeah. Now the orc crit die. Uh, that next extra dice, basically. Uh, another wow. five. And so then proficiency. Because that, that die is also doubled. <laughs> okay. Poor shot. Well, no, he, if he crits as an orc, he gets an extra An extra die. one die on top of... Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So That's not just part of it. It's not just a 43. Okay. 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 And then your uh, strength bonus, I think it is, or dex bonus, depending strength. on which one you're using. Uh, plus three more. Yep. So plus 46. proficiency. <laughs> Oof. Uh, plus five more. No, uh, not to damage. Er, not to damage, oh, yeah. yeah. Just to plus no, 46. Okay. All right. As you, you jam in with the knife, and you can kind of feel the edge of bone underneath, and then you st- shiv the knife a little bit further around that bone, hitting something vital inside, and the thing rears back. It's not dead. Cool. But you can kind of, f- f- in fact, you standing in front of it, you see that its mouth opens and actually see the inner point of the knife on the inside of its stomach uh, that is pierced all the way through and is now bleeding in both directions uh, and thrashing madly as it tries to uh, to recover. Not dead, but not looking like it's going to live much longer as you probably pierce some sort of organ all the way through. Second attack? Second attack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't get to do fighter stuff nope, very often. Not a problem. Help yourself. Wow. Then do the one in front of me. That was close. Uh, 18 <laughs> and stabby thing. No, no, it's 18. That's a hit. Uh, what? Uh, 18. Well, hold on a sec. 18, 16, 17, 27. <laughs> so good you almost hit twice, but nice. you only hit once. Good. All right. Uh, these things. Yeah. Seven. Uh, and Radiant. Uh, another four. That's eleven. Eleven. Right. Eleven more damage. Uh, as the little spark goes off on its inside. I, 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 yeah. I added it in. Yeah. The spark goes off on the inside, making its mouth glow for a moment uh, as you kind of just sort of drag the knife a little bit further back, making this na- ma- nasty wound in the side of its of its body that now uh, blood is pouring out of. Cool. But still alive. Bonus action? <laughs> sure. Extra action on extra attack on a crit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, because normally you're only... Normally handed. I get two attacks. Well, yeah, but you are only one-handed. Yeah, right, that's okay. I still get an additional oh, attack yeah, with, yeah. The, mm-hmm. with the crit. There's, I was thinking of the other kind, where yeah. you, if you have an offhand weapon, yep. you can do that. But. Yeah. Uh, this one is just going to be a not 20. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Okay. Only cool. 20. <laughs> this one will do... Oh, there we go. Uh, 7 and Radiant. 8, 9. 9 total? Yeah. How's it feeling now? Still alive well, somehow, but there's a guy. massive gash along its side now. You can actually see some of the internal organs, uh, but somehow, fiercely, this thing is refusing to die. Cool. I'm in. It's uh, 100 feet up. Or wait, you, did, you didn't want to move no, further, so 60, 60 feet up. Mm-hmm. Um, now, though, uh, what is on the ground with Clark and with uh, Elzara is almost invisible to you. Mm-hmm. And he seems to be doing fine. I see the kid go flash. There's a lot of blood and flashes of light. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, you saw me go elemental, so. I, I probably saw you just disappear, because water and water. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, yep, they're fine. Um, Team stealth. But these two sharks seem to be seem to be swarming around you, waiting for you to pass through their their uh, teeth. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I'm going to use siphon life. Okay. Uh, but actually, you rock it up by them as well. So, so we're in the same we're we're on the same like uh, plane of. Mm-hmm. I'm doing siphon life first, so they don't murder me as I pass by. Okay. Uh, on just the two or the three? Just the two. Okay. 
if I split up two, I mean even splitting it two ways, it's not going to take anyone out. Uh, I'm hoping it'll feel creepy and sickening enough for them that they'll go away, but... Um, so... I mean, there is part of the description, the two words, utterly fearless. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, uh... But somewhat squeamish might be in there. Maybe, you know. <laughs> Whose description? Uh, the giant sharks. Okay. I haven't read their description. No, that's fair. Uh, six dice and seven dice. All right. However, most creatures, if they f- suddenly feel sick, will leave. Uh, if that they're, is if a they're 17 animal. for yeah. the dinosaur. But it's a dinosaur. And <laughs> only a <laughs> so 12 for the other. Okay. The 17 takes half, so three dice. That takes eight necrotic damage. And the other one takes full. It's 11, 20, 21 necrotic. Nice. That's all going to me for the moment. And then, uh, yes, I uh, shoot up past them. All right. Uh, the first one, the, the dino looking one, takes a swipe at you. 28 to hit. Mm-hmm. Not so much uh, as wow. a swipe as a chomp. Uh, mm-hmm. Nine points of uh, piercing damage. What time they rolled something last That's mm-hmm. crazy. And then the other one, uh, 27 to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, 25 points as the other one takes a big chunk out of your leg. Uh, and they will swim up, but because... No, that was the reactions, actually. And mm-hmm. It's not the turn anyway. Uh, so, yeah, they take gashes at you as you travel on by. And... Uh, yeah. No, I just go up to 60. Okay. Uh, Zakis. So I see a shark. Just a shark is following you. And it's waiting for me to pass through, and it's like, well, shit. It's so basically flown up to you, or swung up to you. Um, well, the shark's going to eat his integrate. So it has okay. to save versus the 19. All right. Save what kind of save? Uh, oh, Reflex, Co- probably. Atomic cohesion. Mm-hmm. Atomic cohesion. <laughs> <laughs> Become glue. Yes, exactly. You just look it up. <laughs> it's all right. Take a moment. I think it's reflex, though. You mm-hmm. get to lose a few atoms today. Actually, no dexterity, yet. Yeah. Dexterity? Okay. Uh, that is an 18 save. Well, it still eats it. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Oh, that's a lot of sixes. I like this. <laughs> 12. Uh, 18. 18. 19, 20, 25, 30, 35, 35 plus, plus 40, 40 is 75. Woo, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now I gotta do math. That probably uh, doesn't taste good. Yeah, okay. It's not a dead deal, though. No, probably not. As you see the spell kind of cr- uh, collide with its, its uh, nose, and the skin kind of peels back along the entire side, re- revealing. Even more of the teeth, that might not have been the good part, but you do see the skull almost almost peeled back to it. One eye goes kind of kind of whitish, uh, and that goes back all along its fins. Uh, it seems angrier now, if anything. And you shoot up on by it, and then it makes an attempt to bite at you. Okay. Uh, oh, that's terrible. Uh, that is that's a because it's missing chunks. 13 to hit. Oh, Oops. that actually misses. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you Major get 14. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, just barely snapping at the at your heels. The teeth it thought, uh, it thought were there were, aren't there anymore. Maybe it was on it was on that side where the the the, the, the eye had gone somewhat wider, and it uh, misjudged slightly the speed of your your movement. Are you continuing to move upward? Yeah, you can yeah. Because that was the force yeah. movement. So and you, uh, I'm still like mentally commending the drift globe to follow me. Uh, it's lost. You move 60, it can't move that fast to keep up with you. Yeah. Okay. So it's down there, and you can't see it anymore. I can see it, right? You can see it beside you, yeah. Okay. But it seems to be kind of aimlessly floating now, yeah. having lost connection to its person. Yep. And your speed is what, uh, swimming? You don't have a swimming speed, so no, it's no, half your 15, 15. 15, so you're 75 feet. Down. Okay. Uh, now it's back around to them. Let's see. Well, let's see. That one's not happy. 
So we'll start with the two that are, are, are chasing after Amrun. Once again, they're slipping up, slipping up higher. Uh, you can now make out some lightness of the sky overhead. Mm -hmm. You're getting closer and closer to the surface. You think you'll probably crest the surface in a second or two. Uh, but they swim right up to beside you once again, mm -hmm. as fast as they can, uh, ready once again to strike. Uh, the one after uh, Zacchaeus uh, does, actually does the same, because it can also speed up to you, mm -hmm. but it spends all of its time catching right up to you. The one that is currently being ridden <laughs> and, and not looking very good uh, is going to take, huh, what are we going to do? It's going to disengage because it's afraid of everything right now Okay. and swim down into the trench. Okay. Isn't it utterly fearless? Uh, yep, but it doesn't mean it, it's going to be foolish. <laughs> it's utterly fearless, not utterly foolish. Uh, as it, it disengages from that and sort of corkscrews down into the uh, the trench. I would like to so, try to maintain the grip. Okay. If possible. Uh, yep, yeah, make a... Uh, uh, it's not really trying to shake you off. So your grip is kind of in, in place. Cool. Um, you're now 40 feet uh, deeper. Yeah. And once again, you feel that, that pull coming towards you. As it kind of navigates in, you also notice the crag is not straight. Right. It has a little bit of an overhang. So if you go straight up, you're going to actually hit that yep. if you're not careful. Nice. Uh, that is its action and move. It doesn't really have a bonus action, so it's done. Uh, that's all the sharks. <laughs> Elzara. I'm going to follow it. Okay. Grab the dwarf glo globe while I'm walking by. Get your flash. Okay. Are you just moving at normal speed or are you actually moving fast? I have a uh, 60 feet move. Okay. Um, what's your or, dexterity sorry, in that form? Sorry, 90. What's your dexterity in that form? Um, I think it's pretty high, isn't it? 14. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Make 90. a sleight of hand roll just to grab it, otherwise it'll take you an actual action. It's interaction with an object, doesn't it? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll allow it. You grab the drift, the drift globe. It's not resisting, yeah. so it's just sort of sitting there aimlessly. Yeah, uh, and I move. Actually, I have a hundred feet in this form. Okay. So. Yep. You can. Are you going to catch up to them? Are you going to get ahead of them? What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to catch up to them, and I want to study it. <laughs> okay. What's your um? What's your uh, uh, vision in this form? Do you still have dark vision? Drift globe in hand. The drift globe's gone dark. Oh, it's it gone dark. Disconnected from its from its uh, source. Oh, uh, okay. Ah, uh, yes, I do have dark vision. Okay, because once you enter the rift, there's no light whatsoever. Right. It is utterly pitch black. Uh, they don't seem to be affected by it. Yeah. Um. So. Stupid sharks. Um. You can't see it, unfortunately. Actually, you can make a perception check at this advantage because you can still perceive things. Water sense. Oh, that is double 13s on the <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised they don't have water sense, but uh, uh, you have a vague idea where it is, but not enough to so study it. The double 13s on the dice is, is still a 22. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a good, good sense of where it is. <laughs> yeah. It's not exactly tremor sense, but you know where it is. You, ca you can't see it enough to study it. You still yeah. actually have to actually see it. But you know where it didn't lose you. Yeah. Um, now, where do you want to get in relation to it? Are you trying to catch Just up to right it? Right beside it, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you easily move to where you kind of feel it, and then pretty much right up against it yeah. is the only time you see it. Uh, a little bit of taste of blood in the water too, yeah. which is probably both its and Clark's at this point. Yeah, uh, and where I can't study it, I'm going to try to hold on to it because I can whelm a thing. So you, it's uh, uh, it's a huge, huge creature though. Yeah. I don't think you can whelm a huge creature. Yeah. If you can like hook onto like one of the many so, holes on it, so but yeah, you, you could try to grab grapple it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could punch it. Uh, it's going to try and not be grappled. I would like to disrupt <laughs> it with my own grapple. It's busy. <laughs> Unfortunately, grappling doesn't really do it. Incapacitate does. Probably doesn't. Uh, I don't have a way to. Do all that. it really does normally is change their change their speed. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but because it's a huge creature, it's not really changing that as well. It's true. Yeah. Um, you do have a reaction, however. And you haven't spent your reaction, so I'll say you can use your reaction to okay. basically give her advantage on the roll. Or I'll, I'll do so. You know, I'm I'm going to grapple Clark. No. Okay. I can get a fish. Yes, but you're, you it's just your speed's going to be zero. It's okay. Yeah, but you're basically a contested grapple between the shark and you at that point. Yeah. Because yeah. I wouldn't have a. Speed. Actually, contested between him and him and you because yeah. he's yeah. the one that's actually holding on. Yeah. Okay. So so I'm going to hold on to him while he's holding on to the shark. Oh, okay. Yep, but. Because you're stronger than he is, no. you're contesting against him. 
Oh, in that form, you definitely are. Oh, barely. So it's a contested yeah. against him, though, because basically he's the one that has to hold on. Yeah. The shark isn't holding on at all. <laughs> it's it's yeah. just moving, and it can easily move away if the thing is not holding him anymore. Yeah. Um, so are you going to grapple him, or are you going to grapple the shark? Basically, if you grapple him, you're likely to pull him right off the shark. Yeah. I mean, that might be your intent. He seems content to ride the shark. Doom, <laughs> bit of so. A, bit of B, honestly. <laughs> well, the shark's um, almost dead. <laughs> I'm hoping it's almost dead. Yeah, I'll grapple oh, it's the shark. You can see it's inside. It, it bleeds all day long. It's fine. I'll, I'll grapple the shark. Okay. Uh, so that is a... So, are you helping? Uh, if I can use a reaction to do that, yes. Yeah. So you'll get advantage on that roll. Cool. I rolled a 19. Let's see if I roll a 20. I hope you do. Four. That's not... Uh, so <laughs> uh, that's a 23. It thrashes, but you do grapple onto its... onto its Basically onto its tail at this point. Uh, however, uh, what is your size? Large. Yeah. So it's not slowed down at all. It's just... You know, it has two people to see it drag down to its wherever. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That was Elzara's turn. Clark. Stabby, stabby. All right. Make with the stabbings. Uh, that'll be a hit, probably. Uh, six is 19. 24. That is definitely a hit. Okay. Uh, regular ass damage is seven. And uh, radiant damage is uh, another four. 11 total. <laughs> so, what does this look like? I don't know. Is this the end? This is its death. Cool. <laughs> Nobody can see it. <laughs> stab. stab and grab. Okay. And we're going to try to float this thing that way. Okay. That's that the hope. This happen. All right. That's the hope. Um, yeah, it's not moving. Okay, so cool. So you make a uh, strength check. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, can I get advantage? Can Why? I? Ha- I have a friend. Because I am also... I, I can't see the friend. I'm <laughs> also grabbing... You're not helping this. him stay on it, though. That's and true. it's gone yeah. limp in your hands. So yeah. you're not really helping him stay on it. That's okay. It's all him fighting against the force, which is trying to drag him upward. Yeah. Good job. Uh, this is a strength check? Yep. Okay, so that would be a 15. 15? Yeah. By the edge of your fingers, Ooh. you're gripping in and as knife. tight as you can, <laughs> and the knife on the one hand, you're holding on, but you're actually straining a little bit as you feel the, okay. the force of it trying to, to retrieve you and pull you upward. Right. Uh, in the outer darkness, but you do feel it go still underneath your cool. hands, and you also notice that as well. Uh, yeah, not really emotion because you're trying not to move. Uh, that's that's it for you. Yep, I'm Rune. The two sharks are following you upward. They're trying to keep pace with you, but you can mm. see that the uh, this the air above you or the sky above you seems to be there. Slightly yep. lighter than anything else. But if I try to go past them, they're going to murder me. I'm try. Yeah, but you can disengage. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Um, yeah, I'll disengage. Okay. As you, how do you disengage? What does it look like? Ah! <laughs> okay. As you as you uh, thrash wildly and kind of allow the water to be, to kind of swirl you uh, as it, as it leaves you upward, uh, the two of them kind of swim where you were and miss. Uh, as you find yourself quickly moving, quickly moving, and whoosh, coming up over the edge of the water and landing on its surface on your back. No, that was not sixty feet. You were probably only 40 feet by the time cool. that last one was. Uh, I am going to... Ha-ha! Well, that's within 60 feet. Um, I look down at Zacchaeus. Uh, you can't see him. Because he was below you before. Uh, um, so he's about... No, we, no feet we both were going 60 feet per turn. He wasn't, though. He, uh, you were going more than 60 feet because no. you were actually swimming. Oh, no, actually, you weren't. Yeah, never mind. Nope. We were at uh, the same height. So you, he was actually a little bit above you slightly. But yeah. yeah. So he's only so like 25 feet. 45 feet away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, 35 feet away, sorry. I am going to uh, summon the uh, spiritual stabby blade. Uh next to the shark that's waiting to bite him. 
Okay. And stab it. All right. Natural 20. Hey. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's already looking pretty hideous. Most of it's been torn away at this point. Uh, and uh, that? that's a 29 total in case it matters. I <laughs> know. <laughs> 13 damage. Okay. And then I'll. No, I'll just leave it there for now. Okay. And that's all I can do. That was Amrun Zakis. You notice the the massive blue uh, spear that you've seen of Amrun cast before comes shimmering into existence beside the shark that's in front of you, stabbing it through. It seems even angrier than before somehow. How bad does it look? Terrible. Okay. I mean, its its skeleton is revealed. Its uh, uh, teeth you can now see all the way up through to the gums. You can see one eye is, is uh, it whited over, but still weirdly fixed on you. Well, it's going to take a chromatic orb, cold at level three. All right. So it has to save versus a uh, nineteen. Uh, what kind of save? I'm pretty sure it's dexterity. Yeah. Uh, Fourteen. Does not save. Boop. Not terribly dexterous, really enough. Ten. And what kind of orb is it? <laughs> cold. Okay. Right, Ten. Sixteen. Nineteen. Twenty-four. 24 cold. As you see the water around it uh, uh, shimmer and, and tighten up as it turns to somewhat ice. It thrashes and twitches. You can see that it broke part of its fin in trying to thrash out of this, but is released and looks even angrier than before. Does it swim slower because it's missing a fin now? It doesn't seem to be affected. Dead. It's almost like it's a force of nature. Are you going to... Oh, and then you go shooting up by yeah. it. And it takes a bite at you. But uh, it's not a save for that. It's an attack roll. Crap. It, you'll Can still I? hit. It's only a 13 to hit it, and you got to have a plus 10. Yeah, I got a 13 yeah. plus 10. So yeah, you're fine. Okay. But it does get a chance to bite at you as you pass on by. That is a 19 to hit. Yeah, that hits. With one last spiteful uh, chomp. 24 piercing damage as it grabs onto one of your legs. Damn it. Oh, yeah. Should have had a grapple. Well... I don't really think of grappling when you don't have arms. It's kind of a weird thing. Also, uh, too, they, they, they tend to move a lot, so grappling might not That's be true. easy. As you yourself feel yourself uh, thrust upward over and whoosh, whoosh, land softly on this ever-changing water on the surface. Uh, that was Zakis. It's their turn. Let's see. Well, the one that's by you gleefully doesn't do anything. Yay! It seems to stop moving entirely. Hooray! Uh, so its entire action is to not do anything. Cool. The two that were uh, below Amrun come racing up towards the surface of the water because you're within it's their mm -hmm. distance now. Uh, and both are going to take snaps out of you. One comes launching up out of the water to try to, to try to bite you. Uh, wow, that's terrible. Uh, that is a 16 to hit though. Gong. Gong as in. That's not going to hit. No. Okay. Uh, the other one. I'm wearing my armor. Maybe it's the, the uh, difficulty of seeing out through the uh, edge of the water. The other one uh, breaches the water, leaps, and I think a 25, uh, 27 hits you. Mm -hmm. uh, as it kind of leaps and grapples. I can't even shield, shield that high. So. Hey. Yeah. 21 piercing damage as it launches and grapples onto your shoulder, taking a chunk before falling back into the water. Uh, similar to the one over by Zakis, uh, you see in fright as this thing weaving badly because it is terribly wounded, still determined, and with that one beady eye aimed at eating you. You don't think at this point it's about killing you, it's about eating you. Maybe it wants a satisfying meal, the last one's ever going to have. You realize now with the amount of damage it's done on its side that even if it did chomp down on you, you'd probably slide out one side. But nonetheless, it's determined. Oof, not that determined though. Uh, 15 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Uh, four. Uh, let me make sure I get the pass. 29 points of damage. As it nips along one of your legs, you can feel the, the, the teeth sliding down your leg, and you can feel this nasty cut that it's wow. got below your, your it's leg. Missing, it's missing 20 a lot of points. teeth, though. 
for hit point buddies. Awesome. We're dead next round. <laughs> uh, that this is, is why no all the sharks. <laughs> Alzara, uh, you have this thing. It's dead in the water. I am going to try to guide the shark. U- use the the pole of Clark's Wait. water walk. Oh, that, that works. That's trying to pull him up and push the shark corpse up. Okay. It's not resisting, but it is tremendously heavy. So it's just half movement, essentially. Which trying is still to 50. Which is still 50, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I, like I said, I'm trying to use the fact that the spell is trying to push him it, up. It really doesn't move it at all. <laughs> the spell's not that strong. Okay. But it does give you an indication of direction. However, make a perception check. I have an idea. Because you're in utter darkness. Uh, that's a... 17? 17? Yes. Okay. Um, as you're pushing upward, you kind of notice on the edge of your watery body the the ridge of stone at the edge of this ravine. And then realize as you shift to the last, at the last minute overward where the ravine actually have a, has an overhang here and managed to not shove him directly into the overhang yes. uh, and managed to get out free uh, from the from that part. Um, drift globe in one hand, <laughs> shark tail in the other, kind of sort of pushing up upwards. That's your your uh, motion. That's movement, really. I'll use my action to... to go again? Yeah. Okay. So and this time, there's feet. nothing really hanging around you, and it's a little bit dimmer, but you can see a little bit as you start pushing upward again. Yeah. Uh, Clark, you feel yourself being elevated quickly. Excellent. This shark may still be alive. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem to doesn't be moving, seem, though. It doesn't seem to be swimming <laughs> yeah. so much as you're sort of moving sideways. Uh, Clark will hang on for dear life. <laughs> he okay. to ride this thing to the surface. All right. Uh, easily done. It's not really thrashing at all Sweet. underneath you. I'm Rune. Two sharks are threatening you. You can see another one has leaped at uh, Zakas a couple of times. Mm. You can see the distance, uh, the boat, but you're still quite a ways away from it. It was almost 20 minutes walk to get approximately here. However, you are standing on the surface of water without any trouble. Mm. Just like three sharks at our feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast Control Water. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use it to control the flow of the water. All right. And uh, it's going to be a little bumpy for us standing on the surface, but an area about 100 feet wide, I am going, uh, okay, not centered on me, but with the edge covering us, uh, maybe 50 feet to one side, or 30 feet to one side, uh, I am going to make the water spin in a circle as fast as it can go. Okay, so you're creating kind of a vortex around you, but not including the space you're in. No, nope. or, or a nope. current, essentially. Uh, yeah, a current under the water that will take the sharks and go, woo! It'll be difficult to ca- catch the sharks in it, but you can certainly try, because they're swimming right around you and kind of underneath mm-hmm. you. Yeah, I, I'm covering the whole area underneath okay. me. Okay, okay. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It might cause some ripples in it the surface. It will definitely cause some ripples in the surface, but okay. But yep. uh, it won't. It shouldn't move us. Okay. But uh, yes, to try to. S- that is shape way. water. Nope, that is control water. That is the big spell. Uh, oh, right. Okay. I have to remember what level it was. Level four. Okay. If they want to resist anything, they need a 17. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay. I guess it's useful in that case. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, all right, we'll use the that rule, I guess, then. Uh, as it starts to spin and churn underneath you, catching them in the pool, um, the surface of the water, are you trying to catch all three of them or just the mm-hmm. two? Okay. The surface of the water is shifting and churning uh, mm-hmm. with the effect of it. Uh, both of you make dexterity saving throws. That's like my third two tonight. Sixteen. Sixteen and a uh, total of three. Three? However, technically that's, we're both below my magic you, save. You're both prone as you're knocked over by the churning water. Uh, lying flat yeah, on, onto, the, onto the water itself. Uh, that was Amrun Zakis. 
the water is churning madly underneath you and you can see that one shark still trying madly to swim against this current caught up in it am i still, still aiming towards you i mean still near Unruin. you're basically that yeah feet we're away. like 10 feet away blast it if you want to i don't know if i can finish it off i'll i can't stagger. keep this going forever i'll stagger towards Amrun. okay fly and I'll take off in the air, like there we go. twenty yeah, feet. That's cool. Okay. The shark can't jump, or thirty feet, just just in case the, sh the shark can't. <laughs> make, 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 make it fifty feet. Go all the way. Yeah. Sixty. So you cast fly, yeah. and you begin to rise up out of the, and out of the water. And everyone can fly up if he chooses to do so. That's on his, that's on his turn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as you launch up over, and you can look down, and you can see the, sh the sharks are fighting madly against this current. They're not having a lot of leeway. Uh, you do see the one that was right right beneath you, kind of jump in your direction, but it's not able to get close enough to catch you before you leave. I go like this uh, towards him. <laughs> then it launches on rockets. No. Uh, <laughs> Nukes! Little do we know that we're in the world Missile of Sharknado. <laughs> well, you're kind of creating the Sharknado yourself, actually. Uh, okay, that's that's your action and move. Uh, you have a bonus action if you have anything. If not, don't worry about it. There's not too many. Uh, it's time for the sharks. So, uh, they are going to resist against this, not very well, I suspect, but they're going to try because uh, they're not letting a, a, a meal go away. Uh, however, ooh, that's a 17 on the die, so one of them manages mm -hmm. to swim over towards you, are so it's got a chance to attack. It's one of the ones on, on him. Uh, and uh, 23 to hit. Yeah. Uh, actually, sorry, no, wait, I got to roll that again because that they have disadvantage on that. Uh, which gives them normal, which is a 24. No, actually, it's still hit. Um, it's not hard. <laughs> ah, but I can actually do something against that one. That's the only time you've rolled low enough that I can cast <laughs> shield. Okay. Does that miss them? Yes. Okay. It adds five to my armor class. As, you, to as the uh, shark jumps up and kind of 26. just 26. about closes down on your foot and then is repulsed and then kind of flops back oh. down in the water. Uh, the other one tries to resist. Rolls a natural one. You see it flying off on in, in the other direction as it's repulsed by it, quickly regaining itself once it's outside. Yeah, it only the goes like water. fifty feet away. So. Yeah, that's still enough. Uh, and yeah, tries to swim around it, not really understanding what it is in front of it. Uh, that's the two of them. The other one, as determined it is to try to regain its motion, natural twenty. As it manages to fight with everything you got, and you can kind of see now that its tail is even broken a little bit as it's trying to swim in your direction. Well, I'm uh, like fifty feet in the air. Well, no, his direction. Okay, because yeah. you can still <laughs> see that. I still and have it's a feeding, It's still a fe feeding frenzy underneath you. Although that's probably uh, still going to hit. That's uh, no, that's a fourteen to hit. As you see this half dead shark try to chomp down on you and then just fall short, unfortunately, and then kind of squat up in the swirl. Uh, that's its turn, and that one doesn't have a turn, and yeah, we can throw the dinosaur one out just 50 feet. Yeah. Just move it out. Okay. Yeah, it's it's over the, here. It was the one that didn't succeed. Uh, Elzera, are you just continuing to move upward? I'm going to move upward. Okay. There's not really any resistance from anything, so it's you easy can. to keep, keep moving quickly upward. <laughs> you can actually see uh, a lot of, or actually half feel a lot of turbulence in the water above you. You actually see one shark being thrown off onto the side, then regain itself, looking to come back in. And two sharks are kind of right above you where you are. Yeah. Um, I. Yeah, to go 100 feet, I need to use all that. Wait. So I, I was at 100 feet. How, how deep did we...? Uh, you were about 250 feet by the time you started. So 250 so by... So you're only about 100 time. feet, 150 feet now. Okay. So there's still 100 feet. Yep. Kay. Yep. And you'll still be 50 feet below the surface. Okay. Roughly. So, yeah. So you're heading back up? So I'm going... Because 100 feet is my slow speed because I'm pushing the thing. Yeah. So I'm 250, so I'm 50 feet below. Exactly. All right. Um, that is Elzara Clark. Clark will attempt to boot the knife again. Okay. Still keeping three three points of contact. Uh, and then because it's probably still dark down here. It's getting lighter as you rise rapidly okay. up through. Uh, he'll reach behind him and grab the glaive. <laughs> okay. And he'll, he'll bend it down and then spend two charges to c 
create a 15 foot lance right through the body of the shark. <laughs> okay. And we're thought, just going to leave it there. I thought you were going to hit Elzara with it, but she would never um, see that coming. My question to you is, do we regain a charge when that happens? Because uh, it's in with, with within one minute. Yes. Sweet. Yes, you do. Is it a big charge? That's a not a very good sign, everybody, but I'll tell you why later. Uh, as you feel a strange sensation. I bet. Um, you haven't killed a lot of things with the glaive itself. No. And there's a sensation of an onrushing uh, of emotion, pure, raw, angry, furious, fighting, never ending emotion. Excellent. As you feel the shark's spirit uh -huh. sucked into the glass. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> uh, how you choose that, that to be expressed later on is up to you. All right. Um, but yes, uh, you feel this weird sensation, Elzera, at the other end as the lathe partially comes out of the backpack and pinions through well, this it's thing. it's strapped on his back. He right. just, he but just you bent of, the handle down. Yeah, yeah, and kind of pinions through the thing. Um, weirdly enough, he's probably more strapped in than before. There is dim light here, though, and you might want to consider where the glaive will be going next. But I'm Yep. Into another shark. I mean... One shark flown away, one nearly dead around you, the other one struggling to come back. They do not seem to know the terms give up. Mm. Well, I'm going to disengage. Okay. <laughs> I imagine kind of hot foot hook hook it. Uh, you do feel the, the energy of the fly spell overtaking you, though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fly up about 60 feet. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to... Is your uh, spiritual weapon still up? It's down there, but... Yeah, uh, yeah no, I just left it. Okay. Uh, uh, I was going to cancel it right then, but I figured I'd just leave it next to the shark. I uh, know, but I resummon it uh, next to the sharks. Okay. Because it has a range of 60 feet. And I'm going to stab the one that looks like the worst. Uh, it's definitely one he's been beating on. Mm, 17. That's a hit. 7 force damage. Okay. Somehow this one will have a tale to tell if it survives. But so far, still alive. And that's all my actions. Okay. I just got to drip blood into the ocean. Zacchaeus. That same shark is going to get a firebolt. Okay. So 8 plus 10, so that's 18. That's a hit. Oh. I like that. 21. 21? You see, unfortunately, as the firebolt hits the water, it dissipates somewhat. I can see it. But, but mm -hmm. uh, you can still see it, okay. yes, but it is inside the water, and fire going through water gets half, right. half damage. But, with some satisfaction, you see it strike, and you see it go still. What else does it look like? How do you describe this? Nice, nice big firebolt glowing brightly. It just dims a little bit and enters right into its eye socket. Good eye. Yeah, good eye. It's good eye. Actually, no. The bad eye, and it travels all the way to the good eye and, like, tears the brain. Like, don't know if that's yeah. quite the angle that's going to take, but it does. It the does kind of. The brain explodes, and the good eye comes flying out. It's it's uh, it's only 11 points of damage. It's not that. <laughs> but it does kind of enter in through that eye and kind of. You can Blast see the, 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 the head kind of kind of cave a little or uh, expand a little bit. And then, and then it sadly goes, and goes limp. Goes. And then actually caught up in the whirlwind goes. Whoosh, like, it, like it's getting world. flushed down a toilet. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. As you guys see a, another shark kind of swimming, uh, floating down towards you, trailing a line of blood. Yeah. Fun. And it's their turn. I stay in the air, though. <laughs> well, the one fighting you is not fighting you because it's dead. I like it. It's more than dead at this point. Hooray. Uh, so the yours. other one that's there is going to try to resist, so it has its own motion back again. Uh, oh, uh, 19. It actually resists and has its own motion. Uh, swimming out of there, because there's no particular thing to, to, to go, except for, hey, there's a shark. And true. There's, a, there's, like a, there's like a meat sack attached to this shark. True. That looks tasty. Let me have the meat sack. So yeah. it goes over to try to take a, a one last swipe at Clark. Okay. And sharks are uh, meat sacks. And that's a 23 okay. to hit. That'll definitely hit. Uh, as it takes a big chunk out of you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that is uh, uh, 31 points of piercing damage. Okay. 
as it takes a, a massive chunk out of, uh, let's say, right out of your back. As yeah. it kind of bites in, you can feel the the uh, the the teeth piercing in and scraping off the interior bones of your rib cage. That sucks. It kind of pulls backwards, uh, and uh, make a uh, make a uh, uh, athletics check. Sure. Um, 27. You managed to hold on to the shark. It does not drag <laughs> oh, you away sweet. from it. Yay. Uh, that's its turn. Uh, and that's the only one that's there. So, Elzara, you see the shark now attacking. Uh, is this one off this here, one. but it might have left? You going to study this one? Okay. Yeah, this, this one off here, but it might have left. Yeah, it can't make it back in. It tried, but it bounced off of the edge of this swirling mass. It gave up. Uh, cool. That's not quitter. That's a concentration spell. Uh, Shape water. Uh, Is that still good? control water? Yeah, concentration ten minutes. Okay, uh, but what about the other one? The the uh, spiritual weapon. Is that concentration? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Let me check. Nope. Okay. Nope. Hmm. Fire and forget. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. it, I, I was pretty sure it was, but well, I wanted to yeah. be sure. Well, I yeah, before we probably, if I, when I got accidentally portaled away, the spear just stayed there <laughs> until I came back. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I rolled like 28. 28? Yeah, up close you get a chance to see how this thing attacks, how it moves through the water, how it managed to fight off this swirling, terrible torrent of water around it, and you get the sense of... Yeah, you know, with a spine elong- elongated like that, unlike the whale you were looking at earlier, which just sort of moves through on sheer force, uh, this one has a certain amount of, not grace, it's more like determination, grit, if you will, and managed to move through. You now have the form of, now, can you do huge figures? Huge creatures, yeah. There's no yeah, size. There's no size. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a giant CR shark. Yeah. You now so have I, that in your repertoire. So I can't do CR 5 yet. Okay, you but know of it. I yeah. can do up to CR4 right yeah. now. It's a CR5. So. It's only a CR5, which is kind of funny, to a certain degree. But yes, you get an up-close and personal point of view as it takes a large chunk out of Clark and tries to rip him off of his prize. Oh. Clark. Hang on to the prize. <laughs> the, the, the water elemental's not moving at all. Yeah. Uh, but you managed to hold on. Yeah. I don't want to go into this for one. <laughs> I, I, I mean, hey... Uh, Clark doesn't. I don't know if I can even recognize it as a third, second person here. As a second, because there's water on water. Like I don't know. Um, We're floating. That's great. There's a little bit of light, so the, the, it's actually. Yeah. Do you have dark vision? You don't have dark vision. Yeah, do you? I do. Okay. Uh, yeah. I've I've that other thing too. Mm-hmm. Uh, blind blind sight. Blind up to yeah. ten feet. Actually, yeah. so you know that she's there. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Friendly. Yeah. Because she's within ten feet of you, essentially, on the and one side of the thing. The breathe water means you could talk. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Mm-hmm. Clark would be like, hey, if this is who I think it is, can you get us to the boat, please? Sure. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is all you really hear. I'll, like, shake. Oh, okay. Up and down. <laughs> there we go. I think that's an affirmative shake, but Excellent. it seems to be fixated on the other shark for some reason. Oh, hey, you know. All right. So otherwise, mm-hmm. you're holding on. Just, yeah. Uh, we're, okay. we're taking a trip. I'm ruined from above. You do not see the sharks. They've died below the surface at this point. Okay, I'll stop the swirly water then, because no need of that. Okay. Um, I'm heading back to the ship, and I head back to the ship. Okay. We fly back, Dragon Ball Z, like... Uh, I appreciate that they <laughs> wait for us. Yeah, uh, Zakis. <laughs> Zakis. How are we ever going to get the I think the, the flight speed is, what, 60? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, uh, if you double move, you can get there this, this round, essentially. Well... No, I should take. No, it'd be, it, yeah, it'd be a while, but um, yeah. it'll be before the spell expires. Yeah, it's an hour. That one is concentration. Better than walking. Oh yeah, definitely. Drier, less mm-hmm. sharky. Hey, <laughs> less sharky. All right, uh, what are you doing, Zakis? You see, I'm ruined. Uh, head back to the ship. You have still haven't seen Clark or Elzera. Should we? Do you think they're okay? Do you think the sharks went after them? <laughs> <laughs> I think that we have very little that we can do for them one way or another. I'm assuming they're alive. Well, I'm assuming Yilzar is alive. <laughs> fair, fair bet. Might be. I mean, who knows? It's a fair bet. Uh, as long as she brings his corpse back within, like, I don't know, ten days, I think I can resurrect him. That is probably the coldest thing you've ever heard anyone say. <laughs> is I don't care if she dies or he dies. I can probably 
bring them back to life. I can yeah. violate all the laws of nature and bring them back to life. That is an unnatural hey, statement for bringing anything. someone back to life is completely within the laws of nature. Nobody has done this. Remember, there are very it's, few, still, it's still within the laws of nature. Not as far as anybody's concerned. Keep that in mind. It's uh, like there are very mm-hmm. few clerics. Hey, I'm uh, really shook right now. He's like, yeah, no, this is a bad idea. It's dangerous for sure. Has been. Should we wait? The fly spell won't last indefinitely, and there could be more sharks. But on the other hand, you can't see it at this point. But that just means they're lower than. I, uh, I message Elzera. Actually, I'll me- well, Elzera. No, I saw her go water elemental. I don't know if she can think in common. Uh, <laughs> I'll message Clark. Uh, Clark. Yeah. Uh, before I leave, uh, how's it going down there? So you kind of like we're in deep shit. Actually. Uh, it's not your turn. You've already moved 120 feet away. Yeah. Um, so maybe on the next turn. Sure, whatever. Um, but Zach, is there something you wanted to do? Because it's your turn. Fine, I'll go away at the ship. There's okay, so you're flying along with, yeah. with uh, him. Okay. Uh, the shark's turn. I am flying like 40 to 50 feet above the. Super- yeah, I figured you're probably going to give a pretty, uh, pretty high uh, berth. Uh, the shark beneath you. Cool. Still doesn't move. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a couple more rounds. Uh, no. Uh, the uh, the other shark, however, is going to come in once again for a strike. Okay. I'm going to start remembering abilities I have now. That would be good. Cool. That would be very good. Like, uh, was it evade? I think it's that. Uh, uh, yeah, I have, uh, the, what's that thing? Uncanny dodge. Uncanny dodge. Yeah. Well, that is only a 15 to hit. That'll still hit. Okay. Where are you here? As it's goes for a chunk. Oh, that's not that bad. It's only 13 points of piercing. I would like to have that, please. All right. As you kind of shift over and it bites unknowingly into the shark companion, no. ripping away some dead flesh. Don't take my prize. Throwing it back and swallowing it immediately. Shark fin, is that worth a lot in this world? No, I mean, is um, the shark fin's size, maybe? That um, is the shark. 20, Elzera. 20. I'll... He's now dodging with the shark in head. This is kind of weird, but... Yeah. Uh, I'll punch the shark. All right. It's about Yay. time to punch the shark again. Uh, I'll punching multi-attack. Uh, so that's an 18 and a 19 on the dice. That's a hit. I could get uh, and then... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 Ooh. damage for both hits. 17 each? Is that other total. Oh, total, okay. Total. I, I just rolled everything together. Gotcha. Uh, all right. If I can make a suggestion, after we get to the boat safely, we should probably take a break. Yeah. yeah I was keeping an eye on time, but it's like, well, I'm, we're almost done. Something's really cool here. Yeah. I think we're almost done. Wait, they're gonna, you're going to study the shark? Okay, well, we'll study the yeah, shark, yeah. and we'll do that next round. Yeah. All right, as you punch, uh, pummel the shark, and it kind of... Uh, weirdly, again, with this fierce determination, takes the punches and looks looks back, but it doesn't seem to notice you as much. It's uh, make a nature check, actually. Well, uh, that's thirteen. Thirteen. You get the impression that it almost thinks you're just the wave, and hasn't really clued in that there's a separate creature there. Yeah. Um, although. Yeah, it, it has some notion that there's something there, but it, it doesn't. It can't distinguish you from the the water. And I will uh, continue to bring Clark and the shark, and I will go towards the boat. Yay! Okay, and you move out of its out of its range pretty easily and pop up on on top of the surface. Uh, as uh, as yeah, the oh, no, I, I, I'm gonna stay in the water. You staying in the water? Okay, yeah. all right. The water turbulence has ended actually at this particular yeah. point, so you're kind of booking it towards the water. I, I can swim better than I can walk right now. Yep, that's fair. <laughs> it's also the shark's corpse is lighter. <laughs> I have the water. Oh, underwater. Help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, that is your turn, Clark. Uh, we're trying to signal the people on the boat we need to haul this thing onto the boat. Unfortunately, you're still underwater. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay. But I'm just going to keep hanging on. All right. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're also like a 20 minute walk from the boat. That's true. Yeah. It's not an elemental walk. Uh, Amrun? Hmm? You were going to message? Yeah, I'll travel back and I'll message, hey, how's it going? Well, uh, how are you? Good. You both <laughs> still alive? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you at the boat. Uh, yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> goes away. All right. Um, 
you can easily outpace the shark at this particular point. So I won't belabor the point. You come swimming up to the edge of the uh, the water. You guys have made it back faster because you can fly a little yeah, I fly a little bit faster than you can do the underwater swimming. Not much. P.S. The others are safe. Wherever you are, I hope you know comment. <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, the message spell kind of ends unless you initiate it again. No, I'm just talking it loud into the oh, water. Okay. Transla <laughs> translating. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but no, because I'm carrying the shark corpse, I'm moving 50 feet instead of 100. But you're running, so, or you're oh, double yeah. moving, so it'd be 100. Yeah, so I would actually get there first. No, they moved at 120. Move 120. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flights, yeah. Like I said, they're just slightly ahead of you, and they left a little bit earlier than you did. Regardless, uh, the folks on the boat see you coming in. You you see them kind of shock and, and point, and Quag looks up at you with some surprise uh, and says something in Orcus to the others who kind of disregard, but they're stepping back and watching. Again, that younger female orc is kind of staring in wonder. And just as you are, I'm assuming, flying into the edge of the ship, or...? Uh, well, about halfway there, uh, I'm going to uh, healing word on both of us so we're not dripping blood into the water. Yeah. Okay. There has been kind of a steady drip as you've been moving along. Uh, but as you come in and, and, and kind of safely land, uh, a few seconds later, there's some shouts from the side of the boat where you were. Uh, make a uh, dexterity saving throw. It's not going to be a hard one, but you do have to make it. I have advantage on those now. Cool. That's true. Uh, dexterity, with the dexterity of the shark. Oh, Sorry. no, you're not a shark. Not, not the shark, the <laughs> elemental. Not yet. <laughs> not, uh, so that is a 13. 13? Uh, you actually end up having to slow down as you almost run into their nets, which are surrounding the ship at the point, uh, and then kind of have to move up over and kind of surface a little bit earlier than you meant to just to be not entangled. Uh, but as the shouting comes up, as they point to a shark which has come out of the water with a clark attached <laughs> and a water elemental attached, uh, and that's what you guys see as well as they point to them. Well, they're okay. Told you that she'd live. <laughs> He's pretty sure he'd live. And you bring... Do you take the shark upon the, the idea boat? The idea is to bring the shark to the boat so that they can lash it and try to either drag it behind the boat or get it out on deck. Okay. They got all the nets in the uh, water already. Well, you can call out to them now because you're right. close enough to, the, to to tell them that. Cool. I will try to do so whilst uh, keeping water in my lungs. You can breathe. You, you can breathe normal, normal too. Oh, okay. So yeah. you don't have to go one or the other. No. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'll call out. Say, hey. Uh, As you call out the first time, when you get out of, out of the air. It's like, boom. <laughs> yeah. Well, plah, 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 yeah. get the water out of your lungs and then speak to them. Uh, Quag laughs a mighty uh, kind of a kind of triumphant laugh and then orders to the other them to get uh, they have a couple of hooks cool. right. on uh, uh, pole arms essentially yep. used for pulling things up like that yep. uh, and they manage to to lash and pull the, yes. the uh, shark up on the bot on the ship uh, they are kind of wary of you in the watery form um, uh, but uh, uh, quag kind of takes takes a look at all of you and then says uh, I make a hand and wave. Yeah, <laughs> that must be the other one then. Yeah. yeah. I I I turn the water in the middle of her into a pink heart shape. <laughs> <laughs> it feels really weird as your interior is reshaped. <laughs> Reformed. <Yeah. laughs> well, I don't shape it. I rec I color it. Ah. That's one of the things shape water can do is okay. color water. Yeah. yeah. It's even. But weirder. I'm only a five foot cube, and as a large creature, she's technically bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a weird sort of heart thing that some of the orcs kind of show uh, look at, and again, this young female orc is kind of just agog okay, at whatever she mythical green leaf. Maybe that works. Uh, uh, with this at this at this weird sort of display in front of her, you go back on board the ship. Going to take a little bit of rest. Yeah. Land on Why don't we ship. take a little mm -hmm. bit of a break <laughs> yeah. and we'll come back with the second half? So we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Bye. Just as I did that, it came back. Mm -hmm. ah. mm. So, we return to the high seas, having faced off against a pod of sharks, and come back looking a little bit worse for wear, but with a shark in tow. Yay. The, uh, the others 
quickly help to move this shark up on board. You get the impression that this is a bounty that they would not normally go after because sharks are dangerous. Uh, they did say there were sharks in the area. It's not that they're unfamiliar with them, but normally they probably don't get that close to the boat. After all, there's a cloud of nets around the boat itself, which you almost got uh, stuck in. Uh, but they quickly uh, make short work of pulling it up on onto the deck. Hooray! Uh, it looks, well, as you might expect, it took a lot of, of, uh, of damage from the ever-steadily moving uh, dagger that you're using, but... <laughs> Um, there's quite a murmur because it does look like dagger wounds. That is clearly your dagger. And the idea that one person took on a giant shark such as this with a dagger already starts to form a story on board this ship. You notice it just because the orcs themselves are speaking in orcish, mm. but they're already starting to whisper and look at you rather in awe. Cool. Are they going to look at me at all when I go and like lie down on the ship deck <laughs> and start breathing for a while? Uh, <laughs> even then, even then, the fact that you're still moving under your own power mm -hmm. uh, does seem to be kind of uh, 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 somewhat amazing. And the young female orc... Mm -hmm. Uh, walks over to you. Okay. Um, looks at you a little bit shy. Asks, Did you really just... She glances over at the shark and looks back at you. Did you really just kill that? With a I had help. To be fair. I... I if <laughs> <laughs> but still, it was your dagger. They did all of that. And, and she points to the large gash wounds along the side. Yeah. Pull out the the uh, sack. She's speaking in orc. Yes. Give and it we a, don't understand. Yeah. Give it a flourish and then put it away again. She's got stars in her eyes. Uh, Fan girl. Oh, I go for name here. Uh, while she's talking, mm -hmm. I'm casting Beacon of Hope, followed by a level six mask here wounds. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Just to really blow their heads off. Uh, That's not going to apply to the shark. <laughs> All right, it's dead. That would be funny. No. Um, so everybody gets uh, who was it? Three, thirty-five health back. Thank you. And the She's, rest we can rest off. She steps up closer to you, just as the spells are going off, and kind of illuminated, backlit, if you will, by this the light of the beacon. Mm. Uh, as the magic pours over you, she steps boldly up to you, mm -hmm. kind of in your space, that close. Mm -hmm. uh, leans down, looks you straight in the eye. Mm -hmm. My name is Sorx, and kisses you. Whoa. With no further uh, preamble whatsoever. Whoa. Uh, as, as she does, and you realize that she's taller than you, actually. Yeah, like, even in her youth, she's taller than, taller than you. Everybody's taller than you. That's true. That's true. Um, but as she kisses you, it's it's forceful. Well, I don't and think I can stop her at this the, point. The, uh, there's a bit of a, of a sharp pain as you realize she's bit your lip with one of her fangs. Okay, so it's not a tusks. dagger in the back then. It doesn't seem to be. Cool. doesn't seem to be. <laughs> All right. Uh, but then she kind of pulls back. Uh, I need uh, a spelling, please. S-O-R-I-X. Okay, that one smelled like it. It's spelled like it's Sorix. Yep, some of them are. Uh, Clark will introduce himself. I'm Clark. It's very nice to meet you. Uh, again, uh... Are you pledged to someone? <laughs> let's discuss that on dry land. She looks hopeful at the, let's discuss this, as opposed to no or yeah. I'm not interested. And she kind of nods solemnly and then backs away to try to resume some of her duties. All right. Uh, you see that as she kind of rejoins the others and whispers, uh, one of them slaps her on the shoulder, kind of, Chidingly, you know, sort of like you shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, another another one kind of kind of uh, shoves that person as if you know, <laughs> you let sure her do her own thing, <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah, you yeah, get the yeah. it's it's weird. You, they don't have any familial resemblance with each other. Okay. But there's that sense that they've probably been a crew together right. for a while, and there's a sort of uh, gentle jarring back and forth. But they quickly back, go back to work and making sure the shark is is uh, secured. And then back to the the uh, more or less waiting because they have to wait till the nets are full before they can start pulling them up. Right. Uh, after Emran sees her uh, 
Clark, uh, when she moves off, and we're going to go over and just like press the shade all just the, uh, no, all the blood <laughs> off. Thank you. And mending the to- tooth bites. Yeah. And there you go. Thank you. You're going to look heroic. Uh, thank you twice. Well, that looked awkward. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, and we just goes. Yeah, well, yeah well, well, shut up. You know what that is. <laughs> there is a part of the back of your head, even though whatever you're presenting forward is certainly your own mm. feeling, but there's a sort of notion, something that your father had said. Okay. Is that, and she, he kind of said it both uh, laughingly and uh, frustratingly, mm-hmm. that orcs are incredibly direct. Okay. And you get the impression that this is probably one of the things he meant, and also, wow, what a weird relationship he had with your mother. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say, no, my dad said, go big or go home. Uh, okay. Um, so, can we celebrate or something? Maybe change the tone? <laughs> hey, check this out. <laughs> Shing. <laughs> uh, and you pull the blade out. You can see it's, it's, it's slightly worn from... Rust hasn't quite taken... Uh, effect on it yet, okay. but you can see where it had been underwater for a couple, for a day or a half, basically. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Uh, the The older lady who lost a foot mm-hmm. uh, was she seemed to be wearing boots at any point, or she no. was barefoot? She was barefoot. Okay. Most of them are barefoot most okay. of the time. Uh, probably when the weather gets worse, they'll they'll wrap up, but they barely wear anything really. Oh, uh, what about the hawk goblin? That have it was armored. Uh, it was armored, yeah. So it would have had a boot or something. Yep, okay. absolutely. So uh, if we get a chance, Clark will look over at the people who are treating the the shark and say, uh, "Let me know if you find a boot." <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there's a, a, a weird sort of uh, surprise that comes up from the crowd, but um, they are actually uh, basically carving this into smaller. Uh, actually, no, they wouldn't butcher it here. They would keep it whole to make yeah. it easier. It um, would keep better if they didn't. Yeah, yeah. So they're basically getting it out of the sun at this point. Um, there's a spare sail they're going to cover over because uh, they can't fit it into the hold. Uh, it's too big. It's actually almost. Uh, I was going to say it's, it's probably pretty as close big as to the, the length of the ship. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a, a laughter that comes up from the from the them as if they you know they look over and you can see that uh, uh, Quag looks over and it seems like you have both of your. To both your boots, so they're not quite yeah. sure exactly what's going on. Um, but they aren't planning to sail back. Quag does ask you, um, do we need to leave here now? We still have the day's harvest to make, so I don't really want to leave right away. If you don't mind, uh, I'm sure we'd love to rest on your ship, if we could. There will be no work until the the, the nets are full, so by all means. Okay. Uh, is that amenable to everybody? Yes. Besides, yeah. you've you've brought another half a load from this shark alone. Well, good. Uh, I hope it's used in good health. It will be. Uh, I name you Clark Shark Killer. Whoa! <laughs> and that's in in orc. Whoa! Um, we'll need a name for but that. But you no, get a, you get an impression that that there's almost a formality to what he's done, knowing that he is the the child of Gannett who is effectively the leader of the village, uh, it has some weight to it. Uh, and then he calls out to the others again in Orc. Uh, all here, I now name him Clark Shark Killer. Clark will look confused, because he hasn't heard this story yet. Hmm. Hmm? hmm? What? He'll just be like, what's going on? Oh, the others acknowledge the uh, the yeah. The he's like, yeah. don't ask me. What's going on? Before. And there's a there's a, a collective cheer that comes up. Uh, uh, think the I drum just... starts to beat a little bit, and there's like a huh, 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 okay. as the rest of them are kind of gathering all around a little bit, and then the chant turns into Clark, <laughs> Clark, 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 the shark killer, Clark, Whoa. Clark. Emron comes up with the pot of an two arm. And drops to one knee. Ah, <laughs> not you. There's <laughs> a cheer that, that breaks, this. Yeah. breaks the uh, the crowd. All right, uh, Clark okay. will attempt to consume it in okay. one go. Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh, wow. Okay. And then maybe fall over and forget all this ever happened. All right, uh, make a Constitution saving throw. I would love to. It is extraordinarily thick. It's actually kind of hard to drink that fast. 
Uh, we might do okay here. The, the chant kind of continues the drum beat now. The thump, the thump, the thump, the thump. 15, 25? 25. So, it, it is not a smooth drink. It's no. not one that's harsh. It's it's actually extraordinarily sweet and very subtle. Right. But it is thick. And it is as much eating as it is drinking, especially that this has been sitting here. Although it's in the sun, it's pretty cool outside. What's the vessel? Is it like a clay, it's a clay thing? Pot, okay. You know? yeah. uh, Clark will hurl it past everybody and... And onto the boat, and okay. hopefully it'll shatter. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it breaks easily. Cool. Uh, from um, that. He'll, and, he'll raise an arm, cheer once, and then go over there and lie down. Okay. <laughs> um, and there's a bit of cheering behind you as well. And after a while, it does die down. Um, the rest of you see this spectacle going on, and you also see Clark kind of lying down a little bit less steadily than he was a few minutes ago. <laughs> May I make an insight check on Clark during this sure. thing? Sure. What are you hoping to determine? Just figure out what the fuck is going on in okay. his brain. It's pretty opaque as well. The language is opaque to you. Uh, that is... Well, I can totally read things. <laughs> uh, that is a 14. 14. So, um... Not the deeper thoughts, but what are Clark's immediate He's reactions? Just, uh, um, is overwhelmed? he overwhelmed? Yeah. yeah. Um, slightly, like... Um, what's the word? He seems out of his element. Yeah. Like, he might as well be looking at a magical storm at this point. It's... Uh, yeah. Um, and he'll probably look at you looking at him and go, uh... <laughs> so I have a name his, with these his people His eyes now? aren't exactly focusing yeah, they're, much they're anymore. Kind of, we're kind of <laughs> doing that sort of, sort of thing where it's like, you could swear that the boat was moving, but no, it's probably just him. Um, even though you're, you're more or less solid of yourself, it mm. still has an effect. Mm. I'll, I'll take care of him. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't throw. Um, Quag kind of, kind of uh, uh, sure slaps you on the shoulder. Uh, out of the corner of your eye, you see a a kind of frustrated young female orc. At your kind of, I'll take care of him. She kind of seems to know common at least a little bit, uh, and turns away quickly. Um, your orc blocking. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so, they seem to be resuming back. The talk is kind of amongst themselves quietly. Uh, the clouds get thicker, and in fact, it starts to rain a little bit later on in the day. Uh, it is a cold uh, rain, and it kind of puts a dampener on all of their moods as well. Uh, but every once in a while, there is there is a sort of laugh and a shout of Clark Shark Killer that comes from the other end of the boat. Yes, yes, thank you, thank um, you. <laughs> But what are the rest of you doing? Well, they're, they are they are essentially content to wait at this point. Um, there are small things they're doing on board the ship. There's a little bit of repair, a little bit of, of tending of the sail, um, but not a lot actually to be done at this particular point. So what are you guys doing? Anything? Just going to wait it out? Uh, He'll help to mend stuff. Okay. There's lots of nets and stuff that... Yeah, they, 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 they show you basically the nets they haven't deployed that needed... They keep them on board because this gives them something to do while they're waiting for the other ones to fill up. Uh, and they start to show you the process of, mm -hmm. of how they mend them. I don't know if you're just using... Uh, I'm using spell. mending. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they are kind of kind of amazed and <laughs> well, then they start bringing you like, another net well, and another I don't, net. I don't necessarily do it all that much faster than them because it's still like a minute or ten minutes or something to yeah. fast mending. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, for the for the super frayed ones, though, it's actually much yeah. much easier because they yeah. actually have to replace the bits. Where if all the bits are there, you can still mend it back together. Yeah. Uh, but you do find that they keep bringing you over more and more of the nets uh, and to uh, sure. to make the work easier. One, minute, uh, one of them, actually, the the young female orc does not bring the net she's working on over to you, kind of keeping to herself a little bit, uh, looking a little angrily around at at uh, the rest of you, uh, although not at Clark that way. At some, point, I, at some point, I will take a break and go over to her and, with a problematic one and say, not sure what to do. She looks at you suspiciously. Make a performance check. Mm -hmm. Or a uh, deception? Do we have deception in the system? I even forget what these are. I have deception. I'd rather do performance. Uh, okay. I'm just trying to get closer to her so I can start buffing him up again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, that's a 19. <laughs> so either skill, I got a 21 or a 26. She, she kind of uh, frowns and takes it from you and starts to, to show you. And you get the impression like she's done this a lot. This is probably what she did as yeah. an apprentice, even before getting on a boat. Yep. Um, but she's showing you the manual you way. But then she says, but you just wave your fingers. 
Well, while she's she's uh, uh, showing me that, I say, um, Clark is very strong. He's a very good man. Alzara, like a sister to him. Um, That's she, all. She kind of looks at you, looks at the two of them, suspiciously at you. You sure? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, ring? Married. Kind of nods her head and then her eyes go wide. I see. And she smiles a bit more. <laughs> I just can't take care of my people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am Sorix. I am Amran. Friend of Clark. Then you are friend of mine. What's this name they gave Clark? Ah. It means... Um, killer of that. And she ah. gives the, the name in Orcish for the sharks. Doesn't seem to know the, the common word for it. it. Probably doesn't sound like a very good word. Most orc words don't. It, well. Yeah, I, I don't have a word in front of me, and while I do sometimes enjoy just making up words on the spot, I'm, I'm going I'm going to think mm. about that one a little bit. And you can think about that sure, as well if you sure. want. Sure, mm -hmm. way you want the title to be expressed. Um, okay. Well. I pat her on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. And then I go over and I go back to mending. And she starts to hum to herself a little bit as she's mending the the, the uh, nets. I look over at Clark and uh, the moment he looks over at me, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have hours and hours, I assume. Probably. Daylight's nowhere near being done. Okay. And Over the, they, they, they wanted to quit by day by yeah. daybreak. They spent like half an hour doing all yeah, that. Essentially, yeah. Over the course of the next hour or two, when Clark gets his senses back, um, he'd like to kind of motion his party over. Okay, so you're kind of gathering everybody yeah. together. Yeah, I'll bring some Are you trying over. to make it away from everybody else, or just no? Just I mean, it, you know gather the people. There's not a whole lot of room on this boat, imagine. He so. just wants to show superiority by making us come to him. <laughs> well, I mean, he'll, he'll go to them to gather them. I don't want to be... Him, him, him. Emran <laughs> quickly messages the two of them saying, let's go down and kneel before him like he's our leader. Trust me. <laughs> this would be awesome. So, do you do that? I do. I don't know if they were going to. Zach just kind of rolls his eyes. <laughs> as, as normal. <laughs> but when he did the presentation of... <laughs> Of the, the stuff. I'm guessing Clark felt like just really not comfortable with that. <laughs> he looked a bit uncomfortable with it, although he grabbed it and drank it down, kind of uh, taking <laughs> ownership of it at the same time. Uh, I'm not going to make Clark feel more uncomfortable. <laughs> so only, only Amrun can do it then with the, the big display of fealty. And the other uh, two are like... Mm. Uh, you can get up now. <laughs> sure. Okay. Just, uh, just making sure we get a good impression. I, I take care of the one who almost dies all the time. So the the fight down there uh, is something that doesn't happen very often, apparently. So we did good. I don't. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people jump down there to fight the sharks. Uh, so no. Terrifying. Thank you all for helping and saving my life again. I didn't really do all that much. And well. I, I can't breathe under there normally, so mm. one of you had a part to do with that. Uh, I get you down there. <laughs> um, for sharing your magical knowledge and wisdom, I, I will try to give you some back. The uh, the weapon I carry on my back, which has probably disappeared by this point. I think you would have you would have put it away as soon as the sun. Yeah, sure. As soon as it came out. E either so. I, it's t it's a. It's a pole arm. I don't know where you can put it. <laughs> well, if you feel like it needs to go away, it oh. vanishes. Oh, okay, cool. I just assume it vanishes anyway. Uh, it tries not to. Oh, okay. Uh, well, but, and, and, but you do feel. In fact, you have this weird sensation of it almost wanting to go away. Yes, yes. But so waiting it, until you can. Tell it, it can to. it be dismissed? Right. Okay, I will do that. Uh, I would. I will in, in the future almost, do that. Regularly. Almost as though it's in in pain. Yeah, as it I, comes I to will, the daylight. Yeah, let's do that at all times where it's bright light out. Just just as a but right now it's one. overcast and rainy, though. Yeah, which is yeah. why it didn't dissipate immediately. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, this, uh, the weapon I carry uh, that has been given to me by Paturo and Marius in a weird kind of way, um, it consumes souls. I don't know if I told you that already. 
I think I might have. I think I would have written up. I think I would have. I think I mentioned it before you came to visit us. That could be. We had a little lizard guy at one point. Anyway, um, that thing, and I'll point to the shark being treated, uh, had a spirit or a soul in it. I don't know if that's normal. That's interesting. I would assume animals don't. I look over the Zara. Is that normal? I mean, to me, they do. I can have a conversation with them. They think of their own free will. And look, I have an immortal chicken. (laughs) If he doesn't have a soul, who does? Wow, that's a throwback. Uh, Well, I'll I'll leave that with you guys, then. (coughs) So, why is this important right now? Do we uh, see any animals well, in the shadow? Well, it kind of shows that at least there, that there had were, a shadow. Yeah, there were no animals in the shadow, as far as we can tell. No, you never saw any sign. Yeah. Mm. So now the shadow presumably has a shark. Ooh, hmm. What will Pichiro think of that? I think he'll like it. I think Marius is going to get a kick out of it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hopefully it won't make the thing taste any worse than it probably does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm apparently a shark killer now. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. Is that what the chant means? Uh, I think they just conferred a title or something. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Let's see. Please don't treat me any differently. I won't. I look at number <laughs> What? Look. She's yeah. got a thing for him. Yeah, apparently. Oh, look, she's cute. Apparently that's another thing that's happened. So. Uh, and how do you feel about this? I'm concerned. Uh... Is it an age thing? No. No, she's a little younger than me, I think. Um, but You definitely feel that she was younger. Well, she's she's like at least five to ten years younger yeah. than me. Um, okay. Is it a durability thing? No. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I should... Uh, I don't know if I'd make a very good partner, considering I die with you people on a regular basis. <laughs> And luckily, I've returned every time. But there may not be a time that I do. Yeah, that's understandable. We live a dangerous life. So. And settling down with somebody would take up so much time. Imagine if I settled down with somebody and, like, and I could... Would I still be able to do my job at the library? If you married by Lee, sure. Hmm. And, and, you I think, do an <laughs> and you think back to the messages you the have. The fact that there wasn't a no. <laughs> no, what? what Zekis was thinking at the time was, <laughs> is Elzera j- glaring daggers into me? Could this actually work? And three, what would Alexia think? Uh, I, you, I, you might also remember that one of the things that your mother said to you when you contacted were, you were, did you find anybody nice? <laughs> can you can you speak? So it's to, like a record scratch in Zekis's can, <laughs> can you speak to other gods? No, I. I mostly just kind of speak at my God. Okay. And then get vague answers. I don't really talk with her, so to speak. Mm. Uh, yeah, I. I don't think there'd be any way for me to talk to Marius, but if we get back to Vator, there's got to be a priest of Marius there in one of the places. There's at least one. Um. If- the glaive was gifted to you by Marius, partly. Could you possibly contact him? Maybe. I'm not sure the glaive is actually him. Okay. Or it, or them. It's just a bunch of voices. Did Marius ever appear while Amran was there? Uh, wow. He appeared uh, towards the end there somewhere, didn't he? Well, we were talking to him. Was, yes. Uh, yeah, I think he yeah, did, because, because you was, had refused the glaive, yeah. and then Amran came along, and then he'd given it back to you. Yeah. I could try ascending. I mean, he's a god. You can just say no. Uh, but maybe it'll work. I'm, I'm just looking for advice. What uh, kind? Marius is fickle, so maybe this is part of a plan. Mm. This uh, nice lady. Ah. I could ask Palexia about that. I mean, she might know if it's someone else's plan. Or if it's just okay. nothing. But you hardly know her. She just came over and abruptly smooshed you. But that's 
that may be how Marius expresses his will. Mm-hmm. Or it could be just be the local customs. Yeah, I, know. I, I, I try to find out. I've never been bit on the face yet before, and we've been here a, a week, three or four days at least. Yes, a couple of days. A couple yeah. of days. Yeah. The gods could interfere in our lives constantly if they wanted to. I mean, it's really hard to tell what. I mean, like, I mean, like we were talking about before. The guy that brought us here said he couldn't predict where we were going to land, yet. We landed on the same island that has his sister uh, while a boat nearby was being attacked that we could help. So, uh, I mean... And presumably near the heart of Paturo. Possibly. Who knows? Um, well, the heart so, is not on these islands. Well, the, the path yeah. may be here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a sit down and pull out a vial of holy water and levitate it into the air and... Um, Hmm. Do we still have the map with us? I should. Uh, unless you found a waterproof place to put it. Bag of probably. Holding. Okay. Yeah, it's probably in one of our bags of holding. And yeah. by one of them, the only one. Oh, there. okay. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have another one. Okay. So, yeah, it, it, Mine I'd be, be keeping it there because it's the same as I can think of. It's something that you need and something that was given yeah. to you, so I don't see why you would. Um, so, yeah, if you want it, uh, yeah, I can. So while you contact your gods, yep. I can have a look at that map again. Do you have any thoughts? Do you awful quiet? The gods aren't something that I pay attention to. Fair enough. Much. I mean, there is a connection through the grove. There is. But it's it's different. But it yeah, it's it's not in that way. Um, if there's a way to describe, as one would, the uh, the intelligence of the shark spirit. I will try to do that. Okay. Um, make an insight roll. Okay. And mostly I just want to get the feelings into wordy bits. Yeah. Nah. Uh, two. Well, a two's yeah, it is, it's awkward. Um, <laughs> you try to express it, and you keep using the word anger. There's a soul, and there's anger, and there's rage, and there's primal, non-thinky stuff going on. Yeah. That's about a roll of a two. Yeah. 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 It's difficult to express it. And and it is one of those things where you, you quite literally don't have the vocabulary for this. I mean, I can have conversations with animals. I, I'm like I'm not sure this was an animal no point at it. I think it was something else, maybe taking an animal's form. If we wait what? So it wasn't sure. I I don't know. Because yeah. if Elzara can speak to you, how good of a look did you get at the sharks, by the way? Good enough, probably. They're good enough. Right. And you can communicate yeah. with animals. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. If we <laughs> could possibly go back down after the cannon, could you, like, mentally tell them to fuck off and leave us alone? <laughs> no. Damn it. It was worth a shot. I'm not a sea elf. You hit one in the nose with a disintegration spell and it didn't want to go away, so I don't think it's going to pay attention. Well, to that was not exactly it. the polite approach. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring it up because it's weird and I don't know what well, if it means. We, if we fight another animal, see if it works yeah. on something that we are pretty sure is an animal. So you're giving me license to kill an innocent animal? Well, I said if we're fighting one. Okay. But self defense. If we need to kill one to eat, go ahead. Well, I'll see if they have a cow or something. We can take care of it and maybe provide another meal. It's an orc cow. It's Ten feet tall and massive. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> like you've met Rascal and Brenda. They both have personalities. We've had conversations. My bear and raccoon. Hmm, you you doing. gesture at them and make noises. Yeah. And they don't eat you. Yeah, we've had full conversations. That's what happens. All uh, right. All right. I just assumed you commanded them. Nah. Uh. I can tell you that the raccoon has an innate immunity to the command spell. (laughs) (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. (laughs) So, you find yourself some inner peace. The motion of the water uh, in some ways acts 
like a, a metronome to your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, you are, are surrounded by the primary element associated with Paluxia, something you've seen over and over again. Water is her and she is water, and draw upon that connection. What are you doing? Commune? Yes. Okay. Three questions, yes or no. All right. And you're focusing again on holy water in this case? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of... A bit of a light out, rain okay. overhead as it's, you know, continuing to storm. There's a, a rumble off in the distance as some, some storm is fire, uh, firing up, but they don't seem to be too concerned about it on the deck. In that case, uh, the rain isn't hitting him. Okay. Just yes, because he's got the shape water thing out to shape the water, he's also making the There's a bit of a nimbus falling. around him then yeah, of, of, uh, of dry. There's um, a, a lot of whispering coming from the orcs on the other end looking at this, wondering at it. I didn't even think about doing it. I was trying to figure out how to keep the rain off. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> this this uh, cantrip is way more fun than I thought it was. And I thought it was pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, he'll uh, yeah he'll get very sort of deep into the one with water-ness. Uh, um, water is not as deep as you. Mm, I try to be the water, but I still can't turn it into an elemental. <laughs> um, and the first thing he'll ask uh, is, what's his name, Sorix? Sorix, yep. Come here. Is Sorix's attraction to Clark, I'm be saying this in my head. Please. Right now. Uh, is Sorix's <laughs> attraction to Clark influenced by any of the gods, hmm. or by any uh, celestial or infernal powers, however they refer to it. Well, those are two different Yeah, questions. technically evil gods aren't <laughs> infernal, they're still celestial. Well, um, and for example, Paturo would not be considered a god. Mm -hmm. um, probably. Well, I'll just say, is, it being, is the relationship being influenced by Marius, since that's who we were kind okay. of talking about anyways? Um, there's a, a distant rumble of thunder and a cold wind blows through. The sail is tied down but uh, comes loose for a second and one of the orcs, in fact Sorix, is sent over to tie it back up again. It smacks her off into the water and she turns. No, no. <laughs> Actually, she can um, breathe water for a day anyway. Um, but as she's as she's doing this, she kind of glances over towards Clark, who doesn't seem to notice that she's looking. Um, and in that moment where she believes probably no one is looking, there's a, a genuine interest that you can see, almost as if it's written across her face. Uh, and the rest of the universe doesn't even exist at that moment for her. So I'm assuming that's a non no interference. So that that's what you can assume yeah. from that. Okay. Uh, let's Bad luck, though. You got see. yourself a stalker. <laughs> um, do animals normally have souls that Clark's weapon could consume? Hmm. I haven't really thought about the other two questions, so might as well. The wind picks up even stronger, this time swirling around the boat. Um, the boat itself kind of rocks a little bit in the water. And you get the sense that the boat is twisting in the water. Not spinning, but more that its direction is uncertain. Uh, almost as though um, while it would normally have either be steady in the water or would have a direction, now it seems to be ambiguous. Mm. Yeah, that's either a unknown or a both. Um, let's see what the last one. Um, The organic, he says that with mental... Mental quotes. 
<laughs> uh, Hair quotes. Canon that Zacchaeus wishes to find. Is it reasonable that we might be able to get it, or is it beyond our? I just is it uh, is it within our grasp to reasonably get? It's a very open one, but sure. Yeah, the air goes still, and the clouds grow a little thicker. And the rain stops. You can hear the sound of the water lapping up against the sides of the ship. And the clouds part ever so slightly, allowing a, a shaft of gray light to shine down upon the water. And when you look over where it shines down, it seems to be, although it's hard to tell from this distance, it seems to pierce the spot where you had dripped before, as if pointing to it being there. Were you thank you. asking these questions out loud? Or? No, no, okay. Uh, I have to say, um, I do not believe that Sarx is being manipulated by any of the higher powers, certainly not Marius. Uh, possibly not any power. I believe she is entirely in her own mind. Okay. Uh, also, though I... I'm not sure how willing I am to go back down there. Palexia believes it isn't within our capabilities to get the cannon, should you all wish to attempt so. Okay. Possibly not today, but mm. it would be useful to study. Also, <clears throat> ask if animals more light. Ask if animals have souls, and join. Right. So, I'm very unsure about that one. Okay. Uh, but uh, so, I mean, probably it's because I mean, technically dragons are animals. They almost certainly have souls. Kittens, of course, have souls. Ones they've stolen from others. <laughs> uh, but they're so cute. All right, thank you. I appreciate you reaching out for me on my behalf. Yeah. So, what could we use as a light source to go back down? If we were to go back down, not today. Did you present him with the drift globe again? No. Oh, yeah. Nope. Okay. I would. Oh. Hmm? Yeah. I would have so, just like. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The she just dropped the drift globe at your feet. You grabbed it. Thank you so much. <laughs> you just turn wipe it, it off. Turn it on? Well, there's like salt marks on it. No. <laughs> I'll turn it on to make sure it still works. Didn't get it smashed. If we cool. go... If That's we a thing? Turn it back off. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a... Hmm? No. Oh, Drift Globe is an item. Huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We found it a while ago. Um, if we go down again, we need a lot more preparation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need pressure... It was too cold. We wouldn't have been able to go any further. Yeah, we need some sort of heat. We need light. Pressure. You need armor. Uh, An underwater army. Hey. Uh, preferably some form of swim. movement, like, like their ring. Uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, you're going to have a hard time swinging a weapon under there. Um, and if, I mean... We barely escaped those. I mean, you killed the one of them, but... I, I'll be honest. Just. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine with that. Zacchaeus it, it and I were near... It brought you to the bottom of a ravine. Yeah, Zacchaeus and I were near death. Uh, the only reason we didn't die was because we flew above the ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if we're going down there again, there may be more of those... Uh, so we will need definitely much better preparation uh, before we can go down. Plus, uh, you're able to bring the shark up, uh, and that's a—I mean, that's a heavyweight, but something like a, a cannon. 
it's a lot more dense than any I, I mean if it's like any ballistas or anything we've seen then I mean it's it's going to be heavy uh, who's going to bring it who's going to swim up with it uh, possibly Elzera if the if her water form is strong enough but I mean most of us are going to be useless for trying to bring it up we'd want to have some way of, of making sure we can bring it up with us. Well, uh, mentioned tritons that likes to salvage things from the bottom of the sea. Uh, yeah? Quag? Hmm. What can I do for you? You mentioned tritons earlier. We didn't encounter any. Uh, Good. Where could we find them? Scum of the sea. Can what? You know, where find, find them? Yes. We have to retrieve the thing from the bottom of the ocean. Perhaps we could hire them. Uh, it would be less than must. It would be less difficult than us doing it. Less deadly, also. They sometimes come by the docks to sell the things they found. Mm -hmm. They might come by there tonight, or some of the larger docks. All right. That would be a good place to look, because I am expecting we're not going back down to the bottom today. No. No, thank you. No, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of energy left. Likewise. For healing. Uh, I'm tired and half drunk, which is weird. Huh. I I'm only tired. You're not feeling any pain, mind you. Yeah, I'm, yeah. But you do notice his eyes kind of go, Ugh. His speech <laughs> is a little slurred, too, because your teeth are actually coated with that stuff. Still. Yeah. <laughs> He's licking his lips like the Joker in mm. uh, uh, <laughs> Nolan Batman. Very clean tasks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, better you, you than me. <laughs> so what shall we do to kill time on this ship? Uh, I'm happy to rest. Yeah. Mm. So. I start bandaging, mm. bandaging up. Mm. Yeah. Take some time to see your wounds. Take some time to relax. Maybe think a little bit more about what you encountered, what you might encounter, how you could prepare. Discuss a little bit of that. I think as Can the I, sun. No, hmm? I'll think about the map a little more. I'm pretty sure, like, I've got a pretty good memory of how it goes. Mm -hmm. And I'll okay. try to figure out, like, the pattern at the villages. I'm not tired anymore, or at least I'm not, like, just waking up. Maybe I can figure something out about the map that I was trying to do earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed in the situation, okay. so unless something changes, there's not really any more you okay. can do. Uh, but you spend some time thinking about that. Okay. Claire would like to spend some time looking at that new sword if we get a chance. <gasps> sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Yep. So I'll say that you kind of gather those thoughts and ideas, spend the rest of the day there. The water is relatively calm, actually. In the day, while there is some rain, it's not that uh, cold, surprisingly. Not as salty, either. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. After a while, Quag sends the signal that they're going to bring in the nets. The nets are quite full, actually. A bounty from the sea today. Uh, not an unusual one, but a full one. And with the addition of the shark as well, they're looking at a great haul. We should, we should help them. They do okay. ask if you yeah, want to, yeah. and, in, and in fact, it's it's sort yeah. of good, simple, hard work. Zacchaeus probably doesn't participate. <laughs> uh, His unseen servant can. Yeah. yeah. The unseen servant isn't helping all that much. It's kind of like limply holding one corner of the net. It's like, oh, a fish fell it's, out of the net. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's struggling to lift the fish up. And... Title supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll we'll call it to a close there as they are gathering in the, in the, the fish and ready to go. Did you show us the sword? Yeah, I, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that. Okay, yeah. I thought so we were gonna get. We'll to We'll start the next session with him taking a look at the sword yeah. and sharing and, and sharing. Yeah, sure. And we'll call it to a close for this evening. The watery adventure has begun. Ugh. Yeah, we'll I see. <laughs> we'll see where Clark's shark killer and his friends, his companions, uh, go from here, as his legend grows among the orcs. But at least I'm not an and child toucher. <laughs> 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 well then, let's not make that the last words we say. <laughs> Uh, although I want to thank you for watching, we did have uh, other doc kind of raid on the way through. That's always Woo. kind of weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're if you're uh, interested in seeing more, uh, well, actually, uh, Jody, why don't you tell people what to do? Oh well, it just so happens that we take these uh, streams and we put them on YouTube. At uh, the link in the bottom here, you'll probably see it on YouTube. Um, uh, please like, subscribe, comment, share the video. Uh, do all the things the algorithm likes, and we'll uh, you'll be able to see our next video.
uh, quite easily, I'm sure. Yep, and we hope to stream uh, just about every Sunday, 4 o'clock Atlantic time. So join us on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Again, the link will be okay. on the page. Uh, and if people want to join us socially online... Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's uh, Legend of the Drowned Isles. And there's a group attached to said page, uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. And yeah, we try to post there if we have to miss a session or something like that. Sometimes it is short notice because sometimes it's just, we're sick or the weather's <laughs> Winter, <shit>. yeah. <laughs> Six months of winter. And we'll hopefully, uh, we'll hopefully post uh, some other things up there from time to time as well. Thank you for joining us. I hope everybody had fun. Mm -hmm. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Keep waving. It's not. Bad.